John, this is turning into quite a rivalry here in CZW between two young Lions and Chris Cash and GQ, two guys that started out on the same side of the fence. And Eric Gordulo, GQ is nothing more than jealous of Chris Cash, and you know it. How do you know that? How do you know that Chris Cash is not jealous of GQ? What is GQ jealous of? Living in a trailer park, not having a job, living off of welfare? What could GQ, look at this guy, he's a model. GQ is jealous because Chris Cash has more talent than him, and he knows that Chris Cash has everything it takes to be here at CZW. GQ is looking jacked. You sit in the corner of the locker room, you don't say a word, you just do as you're told. You wrestle maybe the opening match here, the opening match there, gain some experience. No, not these two. They are taking the ball by the hordes and running with it. Look at Chris Cash, that's exactly what I'm talking about. His attitude, he comes out, he's fired up, Eric. Look at the intensity of this kid. He's gonna have a heart attack in there. Chris Cash at GQ, of course, last month in this building. The match ended on a count out. No real winner in the matchup. GQ winning on a count out. Chris Cash now, look at the intensity of Chris Cash. That's what I just got done telling you about, Gargiulo. And look at GQ, jealous already pushes Chris Cash. And what a rivalry this is turning out to be here in Combat Zone Wrestling. They went through the school together. They graduated together, they started together, they trained together, they rode together, they may have even lived together at one point in the dormitories, but now it's a totally different ball game. At one point in time, Eric Gorgulo, they were a tag team, but GQ got jealous of Chris Cash, and the tag team then split. Well, from what I saw, John, it was actually Chris Cash that got jealous. So look at Chris Cash. Look at the big biotic elbow of Chris Cash. Chris Cash giving him the, the, the two-finger salute. Look at the arm drag there. GQ trying to take this one to the mat where it looked as if Chris Cash was trying to start this as a brawl. Chris Cash got sick and tired of carrying GQ, and now he's gonna take it out of him and prove to everyone here at CZW that he was the leader of the team and that he carried that tag team. And look at GQ again, going back to the headlock. Oh wow, look at the athleticism of Chris Cash. Upbeat Paso into the ropes. Lands on his feet again. What athleticism here by these two youngsters. Chris Cash goes behind, roll up, no. GQ holds on, a big clothesline. And look at that, misses, and on. Bam, you see that, Eric? That's talent, Eric. Absolutely, and look at that. And a big right hand, and down goes GQ. Chris Cash has him up, going for the big move, no. Chris Cash went for the money maker. GQ, of course, they wrestled before, they teamed before. He knows what to expect. They have scouted each other more or less, even unintentionally. And GQ one step ahead of that Chris one. Ca Chris Cash is here to fight Eric Cordula. He's not here to wrestle GQ. He's here to put him out of commission. Absolutely, where GQ is here to wrestle Chris Cash. Looks like GQ is trying to buy himself some time. Rob Hartzog tried to establish the authority early on. Look at the athleticism from GQ here. GQ up and over with the talent salt. You call Rob Hartog my authority? He's trying. How dare you? The talent salt by GQ, one of his former partner, Chris Cash, takes both men off of their feet. I'm sure Rob Hartog will be fired when Sheriff Lobo beats the crap out of John Zandig, Eric. What are you talking about? What That's going to come to a head. Are you looking into the future? GQ now scaling up top. If the advantage is going to go anybody's way, it has to be Chris Cash. GQ tried to start this one off slowly, tried to make this a wrestling match, misses the frog ton. And of course, Chris Cash establishing, establishing, excuse me, a faster pace here in this matchup. Chris Cash wants to make this match a fight, Eric. He does not want to wrestle GQ. GQ now, GQ knows last month, sure, he beat Chris Cash, but it was only by a count out. What did he do wrong? He realizes he wound up playing the game of Chris Cash. Chris Cash very slow to get up. Look at a big right hand and another. Look at the two of them trading blows right in the center of the ring. 
They're getting both men off their feet. Two big roaring elbows there. Tag team partners are, they know each other better than anybody else. Look at the look of anguish. Look at the look of pain on both men's faces. Two misses with two clotheslines, big high cross body. And again, Chris Cash nails the money maker. Chris Cash said he wants nothing more than to break the neck of GQ. Chris Cash, the money maker, all it did was buy him a little bit more time. He did not have enough to gather his senses about him, go for the cover. GQ kicks out a big right hand and another. That'll stop him. GQ and Chris Cash, both graduates of the CZW Wrestling Academy, Gargiulo. Absolutely a big high knee by Chris Cash. For those of you out there that watch the show that think you can go and do this in your backyard before you go and kill yourself or kill somebody, you go in there like these two youngsters, you get trained, and you come out here and wrestle in front of 50, 60,000 people every week on Fake You TV. And don't forget, we're back in South Philadelphia on March the 9th. Absolutely. GQ catches him with the falling bridge. Look at him holding on into a pinning attempt there. Hopefully by March the 9th, we'll be under new leadership. All right, that's enough. I need to try being objective every once in a while out here. GQ up to his feet first. When you watch these two, you never know that they've been wrestling in this business for under a year. Wrestling in there crafty like two veterans. Look at those illegal closed fists there by GQ. Why doesn't Rob Hartog do something about that? Big reverse knife edge chop. Couple of shots to the head. Setting up Chris Cash once again. I think he was going for that DDT off there, John. And look at Chris Cash. He scouted GQ. That's what you call doing your homework. Chris Cash with the Hurricane Rana. Takes GQ off that. Those ropes broke the fall of GQ. If it wasn't for those ropes, he may have wound up in the second or third row. I think that Huda Camarada still did the job on GQ. He's laying face down on the mat. Chris Cash now, look at him using those ropes to pull himself to his feet. GQ up on opposite end of the ring. Training kicks, training punches, both men blocking each other's moves. All right, and another bionic elbow takes the feet right off of Chris Cash. Chris Cash with a kick. Oh, oh! Look at a bit too much so in there by Chris Cash. Absolutely, look at how cocky Chris Cash got. And again, takes him off his feet. What's he trying to do, dislocate Chris Cash's jaw? Maybe he is. That cover's not gonna do it. GQ right now, again, maybe it was the inexperience of GQ that did not allow him to hook the leg in that predicament. That's gimmick infringement, Gargiulo. You're not gonna say it, I will. Belly to back suplex, lands on his feet. And a big bulldog. I think that Bulldog took just as much out of Chris Cash as it did GQ because he, he's taking a lot of time going for a cover. Absolutely, Chris Cash, great ring awareness as he used those ropes to his advantage. But Chris Cash, the inexperience, does not allow him to go for the pin, but instead puts the boots to him. Come on, put the shirt back on and eat a meal while you're at it. How dare you come out here and talk about Chris Cash like that, Gargiulo. You don't have half the athleticism as Chris Cash. And he has about half the body of us. Right here, look at him. What does he weigh? 20 pounds soaking wet? How come the fans always got to pick on Chris Cash, Eric? Somebody feed him. Chris Cash now with the chair. Not a smart move. At this point in the match, both men with chairs in their hands. And look at the intensity of GQ. Throws the chair, hits him right in the face. Break his nose with a move like that. The fans don't like that. And why should they, Eric? Chris Cash nails him in the back. Nails him again. Chris Cash now setting him up for something here, John. Slides, he misses. Oh, nails him. bam! That's what I'm talking about, Eric. Is that what you're talking about? Chris Cash is the smarter of the two. Chris Cash now feeling the intensity. These fans in attendance not really having a distinct favorite in this matchup. I don't think they like either one of them, as a matter of fact. I, I like Chris Cash and GQ. Chris Cash up on one leg, up, one leg up top. What's he setting him up for here? 
going to his shoulders. Very unorthodox maneuver. Oh, oh that's cheating, Eric. You're gonna be kidding me. Homie's wearing a cup. GQ now winds up with the chair. Right across the back with that chair, and Chris Cash is outside the ring, Eric. He's hurting out there. The pain in Chris Cash's body has to be tingling all the way from the midsection all the way up to the neck. The only problem I see with Chris Cash Gargiulo is the fact that he wastes too much time jaw jacking the fans. Absolutely a sign of inexperience. Well, he hates the fans, Eric. They don't like him. I agree with him. GQ now still feeling the effects of those maneuvers. Looks very frustrated at this point. And you know no one can appreciate hating the fans more than I do. Absolutely. And look at Chris Cash with a big dragon suplex. And Chris Cash goes right back to the neck. Chris Cash, again, not having enough senses about him to follow through with a pinning attempt. And look at Chris Cash. He doesn't even know where he is. That psychopath. Chris Cash looked like he was holding his kidneys for a minute there. Ramming the head of GQ, ready to the time, keep his table, but GQ is fighting back. GQ now takes Chris Cash's head into the apron. Both men fighting outside of the ring. This is absolutely not the game that GQ wanted to play. Hey, how come Rob Hartog's not administering a 10 count, Eric? You'd have to ask him. Maybe we could send one of our crack reporters like Robbie Marino to the locker room to follow up on this story. This might be a big mistake by GQ taking this match to the outside. Absolutely. This is the game that Chris Cash wanted to play. Both men going out towards the back, retreating. Hey, Eric, are you sure this isn't a trailer park crash match? It very well could be at this point. Are going to go on a brawl back to the trailer park? John, this is not something you would expect from two wrestlers with the amount of inexperience that they each have. Both wrestlers now fighting up on our stage area here. Here they come! They're only a few feet away from us. Eric, we have to be at least 35, 40 feet up. Absolutely. This is dangerous. Absolutely. They're about two or three feet away from us, John. This might end one of their careers. GQ now setting up the table as quick as their careers have started. They can end. Their careers just started, Eric. Chris Cash now can barely get to his feet. Standing up, feeling, feeling the adrenaline, looking out at this sold-out crowd. I'm going to kick his ass. I'm going to make a personal this time. What are you doing doing color commentary during your match? I got you to shut up. And give me back my water, you thief. And GQ all over Chris Cash. What's going on here, Godzilla? You gotta be out of your way. Wait a minute. You gotta be out of his mind. The Cash Flow. Oh, the that's it. Someone call the robot. The Cash Flow. The Cash Flow off the stage. I think all the money was just emptied from that ATM. The Cash Flow off the stage. Just three feet away from us. About 10 feet in the air, down to the ground. Eric, someone call 911! We heard you the first time, House. Chris Cash now making his way back to the ring area. I told you, Eric. Through the crowd. GQ now barely moving. And thank goodness he is. It's just over. It's over, it's now one to one, Gargiulo. Thank God he's moving just a little bit. And would you exactly call Chris Cash a winner in this match? Oh, he's a winner, Eric. He's in the ring with his arm raised. That's what, what it's about. Is that? A sick, sick man. A sicko. GQ barely moving down there. All right. It's enough of this. This thing get some medical attention over there on GQ. This thing's got to end between these two. I think it's over. It very well may be.
match is not about aggression, not about a feud. This match is about simply moving up in the tag team rankings as the Midnight Outlaws, not that we know much about them, will be taking on these two young lions, Ian Knox and Chris Styles. Chris Styles and Ian Knox, two more graduates from the CZW Wrestling Academy, Gargiulo, on Fake You TV. Chris Styles, not a graduate of the Wrestling Academy, but again, just very early in his career. You want to talk about coming into CZW and seizing opportunities? The Midnight Outlaws debuted at the Cage of Death 3 and went right after Nick Cage and Nate Hatred. Then they returned here last month again with Cage and Hatred. Also, BD involved in that match. They came up the losers in that matchup. It was a top contenders match. So these Midnight Outlaws will have to start again from the bottom and work their way up to the top, hopefully to a shot at the backseat boys. Hey, Eric, which one's Kenny and which one's Keno? Kenny Murdoch is in the red, Keno in the black. You should know this, you're a professional what a match announcer. This is gonna be Gargiulo. This should be outstanding. Again, you're not gonna see a lot of hair pulling, you're not gonna see a lot of tight grabbing, you're not gonna see a lot of illegal moves in this matchup. What you're gonna see is some real good wrestling between the Midnight Outlaws, Ian Knox, and Chris Styles. And once again, CZW's back in South Philadelphia, March the 9th, hopefully under new leadership, Gargiulo. We'll see about that. Colorado Bow tie up. Keno Murdoch in there. A big arm ringer by Ian Knox. Ian Knox and Chris Styles. It's been a while since we've seen them in tag team competition. The last time was in that big three way, and they developed a little bit of an attitude against the team of Chris Cash and GQ and VD. Eric, it's not a called attitude, it's called intensity. And how about the experience factor of Ian Knox and his partner Chris Styles? Will their lack of momentum, should that be the case during this matchup, will it result in them losing their tempers? Eric, don't you worry about who loses whose tempers around here, okay? You just worry about calling this match. Of course, we don't know a lot about these Midnight Outlaws. They could be inexperienced. They could have been in the ring for a year, 10 years, 20 years. They could be 30-year veterans for all we know. And, the, and look at Ian Knox, takes Kenny Murdoch right down to the mat what with we, that arm bar. What we do know about these Midnight Outlaws, look at Ian Knox going to that headlock. What we do know about these Midnight Outlaws is as technically crisp as they are, they do not mind mixing it up as we've seen the last couple of times out on Fake UTV with it, Nick Gage and Nate Hatred. They didn't look so technically crisp against Nick Gage and Nate Hatred, now did they? All right, top wrist I lock. so. Rolls under with the hammer lock. Fireman's carry. Goes to work on that arm with a cross arm breaker. Keno Murdoch now with that cross arm breaker. And look at Brian looking right in position. You never see Rob Hartog do that. Well, no, we haven't. You leave Rob Hartog alone. He doesn't come out here and make, make comments about your commentary. Once he gets down on the mat, he don't get back up. All right, enough. Keno Murdoch now and Ian Knox. Both wrestlers yet unable to gain any kind of a sizable advantage trading moves back and forth keeping it very clean very technical very scientific a couple elbows shoots them off big leapfrog oh, look at that into a high cross body Keno no that's what you call ring awareness there by Ian Knox Keno Murdoch with the Mahistro cradle too close to the ropes and Ian Knox back to his feet Last time out, we saw Ian Knox, very impressive, impressive effort, excuse me, against Johnny Cashmere and Nick Mondo. Eric Gargiulo with all the tag teams here in CZW. Where does this leave each one of these teams right here? Well, one would have to think that a victory by the Midnight Outlaws or even Ian Knox and Chris Styles will propel them through the, ring, through the rankings and put them right in line for a title match against the Backseat Boys. Do you think either one of these teams really won a title match against the Backseat Boys? Yeah, I would think they do. I don't think so. You think the Backseat Boys want to wrestle either one of these two teams? And I got news for you. The Backseat Boys are waiting for Nick Gage and they I don't think so. Though. Why did Johnny Cashmere run into the ring last month and hit Nick Gage with a baseball bat? What are you trying to say? You heard me. What are you, you trying to say? You're right next to me. Kenny Murdoch now standing off with Chris Styles. 
been quite a while since we've seen Chris Stiles in action here on Fake QTV. Big move to the midsection. Big right hand, close fist. The first time we've seen that in this matchup. Chris Stiles with the Irish rent. Look at the Stiles plex. Beautiful Stiles plex there on Keno Murdoch. That's Kenny Murdoch. And look at that, the 100 proof. Maia Knox. And a big advantage that these Midnight Outlaws have are, is that you cannot see their faces. You can't see their eyes. You can't see their faces. You can't see the expressions. Did that move truly hurt and affect Kenny Murdoch? Of course it did. Eric. Just, oh! Kino Murdoch with a very crafty move. That I would didn't tell see me, a tag guard, Joel. Neither did I, but that would tell me that they have the more experience in this matchup right to the back of the head. He shouldn't even be in there right now. No tag was ever made. Why isn't Brian Logan doing his job? First draw on the side, then you're trash. to make up your mind. Look at the chop. I tell it like it is, guard Jubal. I don't choose sides. Looks like the Midnight Outlaws are taking the more aggressive approach in this matchup. Clean, but aggressive. Look at that drop kick. Right in the face, Eric. Right in the kisser. Big cover there. Kenny Murdoch now. But again, John, you can't look into the eyes of Kenny Murdoch. You can't tell whether he's frustrated. You can't tell what is going through his mind right now. Big advantage to the Midnight Outlaws. The Murdochs are probably very ugly, Eric. That's why they wear Very the ugly. Look at that big drop kick once again. Right to the midsection. Ian Knox feeling it. You never know what Knox. He would have been out partying till 6 in the morning. Someone told me they saw the Midnight Outlaws. Right now goes for what looks like to be a fisherman's suplex, fisherman's buster. Someone told me they saw the Midnight Outlaws without their mask, Eric, and it says their faces look like they got hit. All right, that's by a bus. Excuse me. Goes for the cover, not enough. Keno Murdoch now putting the mouth to somebody out there, letting the fans get to him. That's kind of odd. Wouldn't expect that from these Midnight Outlaws. Big tag. Do you know these Midnight Outlaws can be anybody? Look at that double arm drag. Kenny and Keto Murdoch, do you think they're related to, to the legendary Dick Murdoch, Eric? They very well could be. Double arm ringer. Look at that, a clothesline to the back, a clothesline to the front. I don't see a resemblance in the stomach. Maybe not. Why don't you have a little respect for the dead, will you, House? Please. His family's probably watching this program. Big save there by Chris Stiles. Had enough presence of mind to get in there and break up that three count. A couple of big forearms there. A couple of big boots to the midsection. Look at that kick. Big roundhouse kick. You know what? I think these Murdochs need to be investigated, Eric. And why is that? Because he just used the bottom rope to kick Ian Knox in the head. Look, that's why. Looks to me that these Midnight Owls, especially Kenny, may have some kind of a martial arts background. Look at that big suplex. Talk about an effect. And a kick out once again. It seems that the Midnight Owls have been in control for, of most of the match, John. Yeah, they have, Eric, but this match is not over. Doesn't matter how long you're in control of this match. As long as you're in control, that last three seconds. Look at a double stomp, a flip, hooks the leg. That's got to be it. No. Too close to the corner of Knox and Styles. Now he... Oh, now they tag. They tag out. It was a legal tag. Shoots in here and knocks. Oh! You're going to be kidding me. The Dixie driver. The Dixie. The Dixie what? The Dixie driver. Dixie driver from these Midnight Outlaws. Nailing in Knox. Almost had him in the center of the ring. Big snapmare takeover. Goes to a chin lock. Tries to slow things down. Hey, Eric, when was the last time you saw a snapmare here in CZW? When was the last time you saw a chin lock? Brian Logan right in there. And Ian Knox has been in there for what has to be way too long at this point. Has to be going to pure adrenaline. You got to give it to the Midnight Outlaws. They have Ian Knox right now down on the mat. And you know, Ian Knox can't do nothing, and he can't use his power if he's down on the mat like that. Keno Murdoch leaning into that chin lock, putting his weight behind it. Big elbow to the midsection, and another, and another. Ian Knox hits the ropes, ducks under the clothesline, ducks again. Oh, big clothesline of his own. Bam! And another. Look 
two power. wicked clotheslines there by Ian Knox. Quick there tag. goes your technically sound that bam! Look at that, took him right off his feet, almost did a 360. He almost took his head off, Eric. There goes your technically sound Midnight Outlaws. Ian Knox right now looks to have lost his cool at this point, and I would too if I were him. Look at that kick to the back of the head. That's called athleticism. Is that what it's called? That's exactly what it's called, Eric. And look who's in control of this match, the Ian Knox. But the inexperience showing here is Ian Knox really at this point should be making the tag. Big fall away slam there. He really should be making the tag at this point to his partner, Chris Stiles. Or at the very least, go for a cover. Chris Stiles, that wasn't much of a tag. Big high back body drop. I've seen them tag, Eric. Barely. And look at that, he rolls through with the Irish trip. Big submission maneuver here by the Irish. Chris Stiles. Big kick to the midsection. Throws him into the corner again, big chop. And another. Let's took a t-shirt right off of him. Kenny Murdoch. Uh-oh. Look at him chopping him. Chopping him up like a tree. Kenny Murdoch now setting him up. Big boot by Chris Stiles. <laughs> Chris Stiles has to be the freshest man of all four during this matchup. That big boot's going to leave a mark, but we'll never see it. Look at the athleticism there by Kenny Murdoch. Kenny Murdoch oh! hitting me. What was that? You got to ask him. Kenny Murdoch and Keno Murdoch, they got all kinds of new maneuvers that we've never seen here before at CZW. Very unorthodox. Is this double pick. tag, Eric. That's right, two fresh wrestlers in there. Oh, oh! Big high heel kick at another. I think that caught Ian Knox right on the nose. Ducks under. Oh! You're gonna be kidding me. Keno Murdoch now. Drops him right across the knee. Oh, he's out of his mind. Eric, there was no tag, Eric. The slice and dice from the Midnight Outlaws. There hasn't been a tag, Eric, by the Outlaws at all. This is very illegal. Or excuse me, I stand. Oh, John, that is the slice and dice. And that should be it. And they just sliced and diced Ian Knox in half. He's going to be hurting tomorrow morning. Very smart maneuver by Ian Knox, rolling out of that ring, breaking things up. Yeah, I was going to say that, Eric. Big shot to the back. Look at this thing breaking down to the outside. Turning into a brawl. you got to be kidding me. High cross off the top. Ian Knox just tumbles down. He can't even stand up, John. He can't even stand on his feet. He has taken so much punishment at this well, point. Well, he's just been doubled team for the last five minutes. There's been no tag in this match. What a match we are seeing here tonight. Between Who's the legal man? Kenny Murdoch and Chris Stiles. Chris Stiles now sent it to the ropes. Chris Stiles now back. You gotta be kidding me, the cannabis plex. Something has to be done about these Midnight Outlaws, Eric. There's just something I don't like about them. Keno Murdoch now has him up double under. Oh! K-Driller! Oh! Oh! K-Driller! K-Driller! Hits him with the K-Driller! Double under hook. Ah! The blackout! Ian Knox nail on the blackout. A K-Driller! One of those Murdochs gotta get out of the ring. And he's got that arm draped across his neck. A cutthroat oh! suplex. Oh! A cutthroat suplex. Did you see the way that he crossed that arm across his neck? Oh! Eric, we may not see you enough. Ass in a cashmere. BD, gauge and hatred. All of the tag teams here, the soft core connection. All of the tag teams better take notice because the Midnight Outlaws are here and on a mission. Please.
beautiful sign of sportsmanship here. Something refreshing at oh, CJW. Yeah, I know you like that, John. You're you a big fan of sportsmanship. Sick. Tremendous matchup here tonight on Fake Q TV, the former World Heavyweight Champion, former Iron Man Champion, Softcore Nick Burke, one on one with Quiet Storm. You're absolutely right, Gargiul. This ought to be a barn burner. Nick Burke, pound for pound, probably the best technical wrestler here in CZW. And what about Quiet Storm? Still has not gotten his shot at either junior heavyweight title, Eric. Absolutely, and this match stems from what happened here last month in the CZW, CZW Arena, excuse me. Remember, Quiet Storm just absolutely nailed Softcore Nick Burke with that Storm Cradle driver. Put him out of commission for a couple of weeks, really nailed him on that move, pinned him, and Nick Burke wants retribution. And there's nothing that Nick Burke should be ashamed about because if anyone gets hit with the Storm Cradle driver, it's one, two, three, over. Absolutely, as it was last month. And I would imagine, John, that if Quiet Storm is to hit that move again tonight, the same result will occur. And And the fans here love Quiet Storm. What's interesting about this match, John, Nick Burke here all alone. Z-Bar over in Japan right now. Ty Street nowhere to be found. Quiet Storm, the same thing. He has disassociated himself from his former partners. Quiet Storm is now on his own. He figured he dumped his partners. They were holding him back. And he is here now to make an impact in our singles division in CZW. Get your story straight, Eric Cordulo. You're absolutely right about one thing. Quiet Storm being held back, both in tag team competition and in singles competition. And when Sheriff Lobo takes over, oh, and he will take over. All right. Quiet Storm will get what he deserves. Quiet Storm now, look at the face. Look at the sign of determination, of focus on Quiet Storm where you have Nick Burke on the other end who's usually a little bit off and a little bit goofy. Likes to have fun at his opponent's expense. But right now he's pointing to the neck. He wants revenge. Look at Logan. What's he laughing at? That moron. If Brian Logan got hit with that storm cradle driver, he wouldn't be in there laughing. Damn right. Again, both wrestlers here on their own tonight. They are doing this on their own. Quiet Storm has broken away from his former partners. He no longer has Pastor Jim around. Jimmy Washington's gone. Nick Burke here by himself. Z Bars over in Japan. Donkey punching somebody. One of those geisha girls over there. And of course, Ty Street not here. Should be very interesting. You know, Eric, you want to talk about who has the advantage in this match. You would have to say Nick Burke has the advantage. How many superstars have defeated Nick Burke two times? Well, I'll tell you this much, John, in singles competition, Quiet Storm has been on a roll the last time. We saw Quiet Storm in singles competition on Fake U TV. It was in a victory over Ruckus. Look at him sitting down on that leg. And that's why Quiet Storm should be number one contender to the CZW Junior Heavyweight title. And Quiet Storm, look at him, just wrapping Nick Burke up right now. You will see a lot of submission maneuvers in this matchup from both wrestlers. Nick Burke, if he shed that little goofy persona and got serious like he used to be around here, John, maybe he'd get back to the world championship scene like he once was. Remember, he's a former world champion, believe it or not. You know, what it may just come down to, who has the right position when they slap in a submission maneuver? Absolutely, I thought that Nick Burke was going to go for a mile. He stroke cradle, but instead decides to, to tie Quiet Storm up. You would have to think if they were going to get into a battle of submissions, the advantage would go to Quiet Storm. 
And why would you say that, Garjo? It's like a Rubik's Cube of submissions. You can't figure them out. Nick Burke now whips off Quiet Storm. Quiet Storm holds onto that arm. Smart move there by Quiet Storm. Pick one body part and stay on it. And Nick Burke, again, under that goofy persona, is quite an athlete. As you're seeing here tonight, look at the big Hurricane Rana. Well, Eric, he is a former world champion. He's a former softcore heavyweight champion as well. Absolutely. A quiet storm, and Nick Burke is breaking down in the center of the ring. Advantage, Nick Burke. A quiet storm looks a little upset at this point. Nick Burke obviously has the size advantage in this match, but the speed would have to go to Quiet Storm. Quiet Storm down, Nick Burke up and over. Quiet Storm now going up top. This didn't take long. Quiet Storm very versatile. Up and over, off the top, to the floor. A very gutsy move on Quiet Storm's part because if Burke moved, it would have been over for Quiet Storm. Eric Arjuna's going to take a hell of a lot more than that to put away the Quiet Storm. Sometimes you live, sometimes you die by those high-risk maneuvers. That's the thing about this quiet storm. He will take more risks in this matchup than Nick Burke, and that could be the difference, pro and con, if you're a quiet storm fan here tonight on Fake You TV. You know, you, you know, you want to talk about advantages. We you know we went with Nick Burke earlier, but Quiet Storm has yet to hold gold here in CZW, so he may be the hungrier of the two. And Quiet Storm, unorthodox, gets out of that sunset flip. Nick Burke did not even get a one count out of that. Big leapfrog up and over. Oh! Sits out, face buster. Quiet Storm might be wearing a mask after this match. And John, I've said it a million times, if Nick would shed that goofy persona, start stop messing around with that soft core crap, he could get back in the rankings, he could move up. Remember, he's a former world champion. He wasn't soft core when he beat Justice Payne back last year for that world championship, was he? Oh, no, but he was soft core when he won the CZW Iron Man title and then made it to soft core. And how long did that did you last? Forget that? How long did that last? Big right hand, quiet storm with the reversal. Rolls through, holds on to the leg, wraps him up. Nick Burke in a lot of trouble. Right in the center of the ring. He has he the get right in position, Eric. And John, this is what you're going to see throughout this matchup. A lot of submissions. This one could go all night. Nick, I don't know if Nick Burke could sit there all night in that move. Nick Burke had the awareness to grab that bottom rope. Now Quiet Storm must break the hole. Quiet Storm, what he will like to do is wear his opponent down throughout the match, and then once his opponent is a little disheveled, so to speak, Quiet Storm will nail that Storm Cradle driver. Nick Burke, on the other hand, likes to go for that Burke, because that likes to go for the Burke driver, and if he nails either Bam! Moves, look at that, sits out with the tombstone. If he nails one of those two moves, it could be over very quickly. He could have very easily broken the Quiet Storm's neck. Nick Burke. Flips over with the leg drop. A very serious Nick Burke we are seeing here tonight. That's softcore Nick Burke, Eric. He's that technical, whether you say he's goofy or not. All right, look at him taking a champion. Bow. Look at him taking a bow out here. Like he just completed some kind of an opera. Thinks he's on Broadway. Look at that cover. Very cocky, very arrogant. I guess Nick Burke didn't think he had to hook the leg, but there it goes. A little bit too late. Maybe he should have did that the first time. Softcore Nick Burke, who really, uh, since the cage of death, John, has not been able to get himself together. He lost that matchup, the three-way, with Adam Flash and Nick Mondo. Then we returned here last month. He loses that tag team match. He really needs to start getting on a streak and get on that streak quickly. Well, you know, all athletes have a little bad run every now and then, Eric Arjulo. But the great athletes pull out of it, and I'm sure Nick Burke will pull out of the rut that he's in. Absolutely. Nick Burke told me earlier tonight that he was embarrassed. He was just embarrassed last month by going down to that Storm Cradle driver. While that's nothing to be embarrassed about, he was embarrassed. You know what they say, Eric? Once a champion, always a champion. Nick Burke now positioning Quiet Storm. Nick Burke going up top. You know, we talked about Quiet Storm going up top. Nick Burke could go up top. Oh! Flips over. Not enough for three. Nick Burke looks a little frustrated at this point. Very technically sound is this matchup. Very athletic. Couple shots in the Quiet midsection. Storm fighting back there on Nick Burke, but Nick Burke goes right to the eyes. Absolutely. And look at that. 
into a kendo cash it style arm bar. This quiet storm is going to finish him off. No. Nick Burke had enough presence of mind to grab that bottom rope once again. Look at that drop toe hold there by Nick Burke into the Oriental Scorpion. And this could be it, Eric. He has it locked in. Nick Burke now with the Oriental Scorpion. This could end it. As you said, it's locked in. He's in the center of the ring. And if Nick Burke can stay focused and hold on to this move, although it looks like Wyatt Storm is making his way to the ropes. Smart move there by Quiet Storm. He had enough awareness to know where he was in the ring so he can in turn grab the bottom rope. Now, do you think if things break down, Nick Burke will resort to using a chair, maybe using a forward object? He Nick seems Burke to be, is soft core, Eric. He seems to be a hypocrite when it comes to that as of late. Nick Burke now picks him up, gut wrench, drops him across the knee. I thought breakfast was going to come up there. Call him maybe for a frog splash. If he hits his frog splash, Eric, it is over. Absolutely. Up top. Frog splash. Oh! Nice. Quiet Storm now up. He's feeling it. Arm reader. Has him up now. Northern Light Suplex rolls through. Holds on. Northern Light Suplex again. Holding on to Nick Burke. Nick Burke using that to his end. Oh! Look at the German suplex, dropped him right on his head. That neck's got to be tender still, coming out of last month after feeling the effects of that Storm Cradle Driver. That seems to be what he's setting him up for, Eric, the Storm Cradle Driver. He's working on the back of Nick Burke's neck. Bam! Look at a big clothesline. I believe the Storm Cradle Driver was voted the move of the year by our fans on CZWWrestling.com. That clothesline out of nowhere almost took the head off of the Quiet Storm. Nick Burke now down, Quiet Storm now down. Neither wrestler really cares about getting any kind of approval from the fans at this point. They're all about themselves, they're all about getting a victory. And I gotta like the strategy so far of both wrestlers. Very even, what's he doing here? Grabs him from behind, a German suplex of his own. Looks like Nick Burke is starting to work on the neck of, of the Quiet Storm. A half and half. Drops Quiet Storm, but no, Quiet Storm rolls over and landed on his feet. He tucked his head, he rolled over, he landed on his feet, on his feet. Nick Burke, shocked. Nick Burke doesn't know what to make of it, Eric. Goes to the ropes. Nick Burke has him up now, catches him. Oh. Suplex. Dropped the right on his head. A lot of suplexes in this one. Looks like Nick Burke is going after the neck, just like Quiet Storm was going after Nick Burke's neck, Eric. Ten minutes expired again. This is a 15-minute time limit. Could, could it be that Nick Burke may be trying to finish off the Quiet Storm with his own finishing maneuver? Very well could be. You'd have to think that both wrestlers hearing the fact that only five minutes remain at this point in the match may be changing their strategy up a little bit. May go in for the kill a little sooner than later. Nick Burke's going upstairs again, Eric. You remember what happened the first time? That's why they call him High Riz. Absolutely. Quiet Storm now catches him. Quiet Storm now for the Storm Cradle Driver. Storm Cradle Driver, no. Quiet Storm now scoops him up. Oh! Dropped him on his head on an erosion. Oh! Dropped him on his head in an erosion. All Quiet Storm now has to do is roll over and cover Nick Burke. Quiet Storm off his feet. Nick Burke off his feet. Both wrestlers. Need a little bit of time to gather their senses about him. This match is taking his toll on both of our superstars. Absolutely. Look at Quiet Storm trying to stand up. Can't stand up. Nick Burke seizing the opportunity to get a second chance on life in this one. Quiet Storm now spins him around. And a big forearm. Takes Burke right off his feet. Looks like that forearm caught Nick Burke right in the throat, Eric. Quiet Storm who has made quite a name for himself here at CZW. Off the top. Oh! He just hit Nick Burke with a frog splash. Big splash. Gets his shoulder up. I don't know if he quite hit a frog splash. Definitely hit a splash. Quiet Storm looks frustrated at this point. Quiet Storm now getting up to his feet. Not much time remaining in this matchup. Remember back last year where Nick Burke was going to time limit draws with everybody here at CZW. Guys like Little Guido Maritano, Trent Acid. 
I got news for you. Nick Burke did not come here for a draw, Eric. It's CD. It's CD. Nick Burke now calling his own move. He's going for the Burke ascent. Quiet Storm now. Quiet Storm has him up. Oh! Spinal! Oh! Spinal shock! Spinal shock! Because he just shocked the spine of Nick Burke. This ought to be a guard duo. And he kicks out. He's got to be going on adrenaline at this point. Kick it out after that spinal shock. Nick Burke just kicked out of instinct, Eric. Out of desperation. Absolutely. Quiet storm now. That's it. Calling for the end of this. Maybe going up for that diamond headbutt. I think that's the biggest mistake some of these superstars make is start calling for the end. Quiet storm now all the way up top. Makes their opponent aware of what they're doing. Looks oh. like he was maybe going for that frog splash. Nick Burke now. And the for the Burke driver. Burke driver. And he nails it. He nails it. He nails the Burke driver. Two and that though. Nick Burke can't believe it. I don't think I've ever seen anybody kick out of a Burke driver. Nick Burke can't believe it, Eric. I don't think I've ever seen anybody kick out of Nick Burke's Burke driver. He's been using that move for years around here. I don't think Nick Burke's ever seen anyone kick out of the Burke driver. Nick Burke now very frustrated at this point. Pulling up the hair of Quiet Storm. Going for that Burke ascent. Quiet Storm rolls through. Storm Cradle Driver. Storm Cradle Driver. SCD. That's SCD. It. That's SCD. SCD. That's SCD. It. Storm Cradle Wait Driver. Storm Cradle Driver. Wait a minute. What happened? I, I think it's a draw. I think the time limit has expired. That's it! It's a draw! It's a draw! After, after all of that, Sean, can you imagine going through all that punishment and walking away with nothing? Nick Burke tasted the Storm Cradle Driver for a second time, Eric. Quiet Storm can't believe it. Nick Burke in a lot of trouble. Not even moving in there. He's not moving. That net's got to be tender still from last month. That last month's SCD. Mario Logan trying to explain things. Quiet Storm wants five more. I say we give it to him. I say we give him five more. I don't think Nick Burke wants five more minutes. He's out cold. And Quiet Storm and Nick Burke, what a matchup here. What a matchup. Somebody here at CTW, we got to sign a rematch with these two. Are you kidding me? Are you out of your mind? Are you kidding me? He can't do 
it. I, I want to see Doomsday do the razzle dazzle. The only time he leaves his feet is to go to bed at night. You gotta be kidding me. You want to see him do the what the razzle dazzle? Greg Matthews will make quite an impact here last month going toe to toe with the Rajis. Unsuccessful, but what an effort from a kid with little experience but a lot of heart. Don't mistake in that heart for stupidity, Eric. The kid came back from a back injury. He came back hungry and only looking at the Rochies in mind. He wanted the Rochies. He wanted Adam Flash. He wants Danny Rose. He is sick and tired of hearing about Danny Rose this, Adam Flash that. Oh, please. The Rochies are sick of Greg Matthews. That's his back problem. Seems like his partner's about to come out. I'd like to see Danny Rose do that razzle dazzle. I'd like to see him do the bad ass. I'd like to see him do all those flips and flops. Oh, oh, he can! Does. Oh, yeah! I'd like to see it. Ruckus oh. is an athlete. Oh, oh he can do, not only do him, but he can do him better than Ruckus. Oh, is that so? That's is what that's so. It's Tuesday, Danny Rose is really making a mockery of himself and his partner and, she, and your Sheriff Lobo. If Tuesday, Danny Rose says he can do it, he can do it, Eric. Let me tell you something. If Zandig defeats Lobo for control of this company. Oh, he will! Company, and Lobo goes away. Those Rochies are in a lot of trouble. They are in a lot of trouble. Those Rochies are co-holders of the Iron Man title. I didn't see Danny Rose. No trouble there. I didn't see Danny Rose do a damn thing to help out of Flash win that belt. Nothing. Why would Greg Matthews pick Ruckus? as his partner. Look at Ruckus just laughing at Danny Rose, laughing at the thought of Danny Rose doing a razzle-dazzle, doing the flips, doing the flops. Oh, Danny Rose will do the razzle-dazzle. If he says he's going to do it, he's going to do it. Oh, is that so? Is he going to get in there and try and match flips, try and match athleticism with one of CZW's best athletes in Ruckus? You know what I'd like to see is Danny Rose do a Ruckus star press. Oh, is that what you'd like to see? So would I. So would I. I like to see Danny Rose shut the hell up for once and just get down to business. Colorado will tie up. Big headlock by Doomsday Danny Rose. Part of the Rochies. Been a part of CZW since April of the year 2001. Ruckus kips up, right on his feet. He didn't even let Danny Rose pose. Let's see Danny Rose do that, huh? Danny Rose. Danny Rose now. Wait a minute. He's gonna try. No, what? Wait a minute. He just landed the butt on his ass. Couldn't even get two feet in the air. He kip up. Making a mockery of himself. That's called a kip up, Eric. Making a joke of himself. That kip up. Please. The only thing that came up was his belly when he hit the mat and he was right back and forth. Ruckus now shooting Danny Rose in. And there's the razzle dazzle. There's the razzle dazzle. You think Doomer's gonna do that? Oh, he can do it. Greg Matthews wearing a protective back brace. Keep your eye on that as this match continues. Now, if I was the Rajis, I'd go right after that back brace. Do say Danny Rose in the big right hand. And Doom put Greg Matthews on the shelf where he belongs. Seems that Doomsday Danny Rose is abandoned. Wait a minute, he's gonna go for the razzle. What is he? Is he out of his mind? What is he doing? A yeah. super kick. And Danny Rose. Getting a standing ovation. You gotta be kidding me, CZW. You gotta be kidding me. That was a beautiful razzle dazzle there by Danny Rose. I told you. And a tag into the true Iron Man champion, Adam Flash. Bam! And a double Rachi slam. That's what I'm talking about. The Rachis. That's what you call a cohesive tag team. All right, Adam Flash. That's a little bit of a problem. A little bit of a problem grabbing his package. And don't forget, we're back in South Philadelphia on March the 9th, Eric Arduo. And what is going to happen on March the 9th? Who knows? Adam Flash now. Hopefully we have a new boss. For your sake. Big clothesline takes Adam Flash off his feet. Ruckus start press. Ruckus start press. 
Adam Fly is doing a little gyrating, but not at his own will. Now, wait a minute. Danny Rose has got to do one of those now. Oh, yeah. Let's see that happen. Ruckus now underneath. Ruckus now has him. Up and over. Sits out. You don't think Danny Rose could do a Ruckus store press? He did the razzle-dazzle. Ruckus with a little bit of a twist to that Parker that he likes to do. Ruckus has more new moves coming out of his arsenal every month. A big tag in to the big Greg Oh, Matthews. now. Oh, now Greg Matthews wants in. Tough He's going to wait until his opponent softened up. Then make the tag. Tough enough Greg Matthews with the obvious size advantage in this matchup. A big elbow. Takes Adam Flash right off his feet. Big right hand. Adam Hunter. Yeah, but don't forget Greg Matthews just coming off a of back surgery. And I'm sure the Rodgers are going to go right to work on his back. Absolutely. As Adam Flash tried to do right there. Greg Matthews calling him in. Head and arm suplex. Head and arm suplex again. He nails it. That was sheer strength, Derek. He just muscled our Iron Man champion, Adam Flash, over. And Greg Matthews taking a page out of the book of the Rochies and getting a little bit arrogant with him. What's Adam Flash signaling for? He needs a shot. I think he wants to take a shot. Big right hand to the midsection there by Adam Flash. Adam Flash now shot in. Greg Matthews with a boot to the midsection. Goes for a vertical suplex. Look at the show of strength there. And a flash weaving and wobbling. And he's about to come down. Eric, I think he's using that back brace as a shield, not support. And Danny Rose now caught by Greg Matthews. Couple of headbutts to the shoulders. Very crafty move by Greg Matthews. Big clothesline. Big boot to the midsection and a DDT. Beautiful DDD there by Adam Flash. Ten and a half years of experience will give Adam Flash that advantage. Something that Greg Matthews can't buy in a store is ten and a half years of in-ring wrestling experience. <laughs> You're right. Adam Flash, who debuted at CZW back in May of the year 2001. Shortly thereafter, reformed the Rochies with Doomsday Danny Rose. And look at him chopping, chopping up Greg Matthews, welcoming him to the wrestling business. And again, Greg Who Matthews paying his dues right now. And it's just the move of the month. The move of the month. Bam! You know what the move of the month is this month? What? The Zandaminator. What? What's the Ruckus Zan doing in there? What's Ruckus doing in there? He never made a tag. That's illegal. Look at Flash, already kissing up to Zandig. Against Zandig wins that matchup. And a tag, an orthodox tag, catches him. And look at that. I got news for you, Adam Flash. Is it the only one playing both sides of the fence? And Ruckus just putting on a show in there, putting on a clinic. And Ruckus would like nothing more than to drop a few pounds to get back into the thick of things in the junior heavyweight division with Trent Aston, who's a former junior heavyweight champion, won the match last month until the Rocket Rebel, as an official representative of the State Athletic Commission of Pennsylvania, came out. Wade Ruck is in the ring with Johnny Cashmere and declared that Ruckus was over the weight limit. You're absolutely right. Ruckus should never been junior heavyweight, nothing in this CG. One of the sickest moves I've ever seen. Look at Danny Rose. He's too overweight to be a junior heavyweight. He's like a super junior heavyweight. Danny Rose now pulled the top rope down. That's John Zandig for you. Oh, is that ruined? Rules and regulations. Danny Rose and Adam Flash who have done nothing but kissed up to Lobo ever since Lobo returned in July. Give him sheriff's badges, give him teddy bears, do whatever they could to get back in, to get to earn brownie points with Lobo. Doomsday get favors. Doomsday Danny Rose just dropped Ruckus right across his throat onto that guardrail on the outside, Eric. And you know what? You ought to start playing both sides of the fence. Adam Flash drinking and working. Big reverse knife edge. Adam Flash rolls Ruckus into the ring. Ruckus has faced Arachi several times in tag team competition here at CZW. Well, you heard Danny Rose earlier. He could do everything Ruckus could do, only better. Doomsday Danny Rose now picking up Ruckus. Ruckus now with the afterburner off the ropes. Bam! Rose, he just got all of Ruckus up. 
and dropped the right on the back of his head. That's raw power there by Doomsday Danny Rose. All right. Showing us that. Was that three? Was that three? I don't know. Why don't you give me a, a microscope? I can try and find that muscle that Danny Rose proclaims to have on that arm of his. Danny Rose now looking to push it down right on the face of Ruckus. Very cocky. Very arrogant. Danny Rose now, and Adam Flash. Very crafty as a tag team. And look at that, Adam Flash takes both wrestlers out in one false swoop. See, the Ratchets are smart. They're going to start working on the back of Ruckus. They know if they can injure Ruckus' back, it's going to take away all those cartwheels and flips out of Ruckus' arsenal. What is the kissing up of Danny Rose got him? They got him a match with Zandig. He was got killed in there. He's best friends with the boss. Yeah, it's got him far, hasn't it? Double rush of leg sweep. By the Rachis. The Rachis have Ruckus right where they want him, Eric. Danny Rose now goes for the cover on Ruckus. Very, very slow counts there by Rob Hartog. What are you trying to insinuate? That he counts slow, Eric. I don't think Rob Hartog knows how to count the three. Danny Rose goes downtown. Kick to the midsection. On Ruckus. And what's he what's he doing here? Goes for a choke, a blatant choke in the ring. How about count a five, Hartog? All right, what does Danny Rose think he's doing in there? I think what he's saying is that it's over. Wait. Choke slam, Ruckus lands on his feet, boot to the midsection. Ruckus shoots in Danny Rose. After murder off. Oh! Kick to the sternum. Someone's got to do something about this ruckus, Eric. Why don't you go in there and do something about a big shot? The guns, Daddy. Why don't you go in there and show them the guns? Adam Flash with a tag. Greg Matthews with a tag. Ducks under. Greg Matthews takes Adam Flash off his feet. Takes him off his feet once again. Big oh! Takes a page right out of the book of the Rachis. Beautiful uh, super kick there by Adam Flash. Man broke his draw. Look at man broke his draw. Excuse me with that move. Ruckus now signaling possibly for the 450. A swanton. But Adam Flash is up. And the last call. The uh, last call. One. He counts a three. And he just got the three count on Ruckus. The last call for Ruckus. And it's over, Eric. Impressive victory. Say what you will about the Rachis, but a very impressive victory. They are now 2-0 in recent tag team matches against Greg Matthews. And the Rachis want a shot at those world tag team titles as well, Eric. The Backseat Boys going to run away from them like they do Gage and Hatred. The Backseat Boys see that different, Eric. They see Gage and Hatred running from the Backseat Boys. And Danny Rose now throwing some chairs in the ring. All right, enough is enough. The match is over. The match is He's over. He's not done with Greg Matthews. Yeah. Yeah. He's back. You gotta be kidding me. Yeah. He's got a broken back. He's got a broken back. He just came back from surgery. Had his fists fused together. He's gonna be out of his mind. Oh, yeah. This isn't part of this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The match is over. What's done is done. Oh, this match is not over until Doomsday Danny Rose says that this match is over. He's signaling for what looked like to be a tough enough driver through those chairs. It's going to be out of his mind. Look at the eyes of Danny ah. Rose. He's got those crazy yes. eyes. Can't get him up. And Danny Rose may have sealed his own feet with that. Danny Rose off his feet. Danny Rose trying to end the career of Greg Matthews, Eric. And I don't blame him. And Greg Matthews now is going to seek some retribution for that back surgery. For getting that back fused together courtesy of Danny Rose. Attacked him. After the show. Well, we're both through the chairs. Wait a minute. Well, we're both through the chairs. Well, he used his own chairs, Eric. Danny Rose dug his own grave. And Greg Matthews doesn't care what the fans think of him. He's going to do what he thinks is best. Look at the smile on his face. The Rockies have turned Greg Matthews into a madman. Greg Matthews with the with the microphone. What's he gonna say? 
Was he going to put some kind of exclamation point on that? Who cares what he's going to say, Eric? Look at him taking a page right out of Danny Rose's book with the challenge. Put the mouth to him. Danny Rose sets those chairs up, and Greg Matthews puts them right through it. Careful what you ask for, Greg Matthews, because you just might get it. Absolutely. Look at Danny Rose sets up the chairs, tries to go for a tough enough driver, winds up flat on his ass in the center of the ring. Look at him not moving. Looks like a big pink cupcake in there. Adam Flash now back in the ring. Danny Rose not moving. Look at him pumping his heart. You think he's going to give he's a mouth to mouth? his partner, Eric. He's going to give a mouth to mouth. Something you don't know about. He's going to give a mouth to mouth. He's going to give a mouth to mouth, John. He's going to give a mouth to mouth. Well, at least he's okay, Eric. Yeah, thank goodness. number one contender to meet Adam Flash. Sick Nick Mondo, the former Iron Man champion. Keep this in mind, John, and those of you watching at home, that Nick Mondo was never pinned in that Iron Man title match back in the Cage of Death 3, Adam Flash pinned Nick Burke. Nick Mondo was never pinned in that matchup. So what are you trying to say, Eric Arzulo? I am trying to say that Nick Mondo deserves another opportunity at that Iron Man championship, and he wants it. He wants it badly. Oh, and maybe he does deserve that title shot. And this may be the biggest challenge to date here in CZW, standing in front of Sick Nick Mondo. Listen to this crowd. He's got the mic. Go to the CZW Wrestling Academy! Quite a few. He 
He sees the competition here. He knows this is the place to be. That's about enough for that. The Messiah's not here to play games. I got news for you, the Messiah ain't gonna take that crap from Sick Nick Mondo. Hey, absolutely right, the Messiah's not here to play games. He can care less whether Sick Nick Mondo flew in from Minnesota or East Pit. He's here for one thing and one thing only, and it's to beat Nick Mondo. Advance here in CZW, maybe get a rematch with Justice Payne. Big heel kick, maybe get a match with Adam Flash for the Iron Man Championship. The Messiah all over Sick Nick Mondo. There goes your World War II Japanese kamikaze pilot now, Eric. Sick Nick Mondo earlier tonight. Look at that. The Messiah up in the air and down. Messiah now all over Sick Nick Mondo. Sick Nick Mondo, of course, grabbed the microphone. Started to tell Messiah's life story in there. Messiah didn't want to hear it. And a Hurricane Rana. I didn't want to hear it either. Drop kick takes the Messiah off his feet. And Eric, I don't think any of the fans wanted to hear Sick Nick Mondo either. The Messiah knows this is the place to be. Sees AW. And what he's going to do to advance here is beat a guy like Sick Nick Mondo. And look at this. Oh! Into a power bomb. Nick Mondo wants to show vote. He paid for it. And look at him mocking Nick Mondo. Yes. You have to think out in California. When the Messiah's wrestling out there, all they heard about with this sicko, Sick Nick Mondo. Sick Nick Mondo can do this better than you. Sick Nick Mondo can take more pain than you. Well, the Messiah got sick and tired of hearing about it and came here to do something about it. Of course he's sick and tired of it, Eric. When you be? The Messiah now up to his feet. The Messiah knows this is the place to be. CZW going after Nick Mondo with an exploder. The Messiah and Nick Mondo both, they both have an incredible high threshold of pain. They can get hardcore in those hardcore sick matches. They can roll around at thumbtacks, play tubes, barbed wire, but they can also wrestle. They can wrestle. Two of the best athletes here at CZW. Big drop kick there by the Messiah. You know what, Eric? I'm starting to like this Messiah. The Messiah now takes Nick Mondo up. The Messiah right now with a Bam! crucifix bomb. A crucifix bomb. He's kicking the crap out of Nick Mondo in his own federation. The Messiah slides out. Looks underneath the ring. I don't know what he's going for. It could be anything with these two. These two are two unorthodox wrestlers. Anything could happen during this match. Anything at all. And CZW, John, listen to the fans. The fans on the message boards, on the websites, through emails, phone calls, they said they wanted to see this match. They wanted to see the Messiah and Sick Nick Mondo go one-on-one. -on -one. You know what? We made it. And look at the Messiah jamming that chair right into the ribs of Nick Mondo. And then proceed to jam it right into his throat. Big moonsault there by the Messiah. Big Quebrada by the Messiah. And Nick Mono earlier tonight told Robbie Marino he's in this match for two things. One, again, to reclaim his position as a number one contender and then win that Iron Man championship belt from Adam Flash. And the other is to cave in the head of the Messiah. He wants to cave his head in, John. Sick Nick Mono is a sick individual. He should be institutionalized. Springboard leg drop and a miss. So a few people around here should be institutionalized. Yeah, I can think of somewhat off the top of my head. His name is John. Look at that. Nick Mondo hits the Mondo driver. Mondo puts a chair right on the face of Messiah. Mondo now hits the ropes up and over. Springs up. Oh! And across the ring. Oh! Did you see the elevation, Eric? Absolutely. And if you're the Messiah, you gotta watch out for that Mondo sledge. He could hit that from any point in the ring during this matchup. And a big roundhouse. And that may be the advantage as the martial arts background of Sick Nick Mondo. Northern Lights rolls over, holds on. The Messiah has no choice but other than to get dropped on the back of his head in the middle of the ring. The Messiah misses. Nick Mondo using the ropes as a springboard almost into a blue thunder driver. It looks like Nick Mondo has a game plan here, Eric. He's working on the back of the Messiah. And the Messiah, of course, last month walked into the ECW arena, the new CZW arena, 
answered the challenge of, of Justice Payne, had what some consider to be the greatest CZW world title match of all time with Justice Payne. Justice Payne victorious in that match, but the Messiah has returned. Yeah, he's returned, Derek. He knows if he takes out Sick Nick Mondo, he will be number one contender for the CZW Iron Man title. The Messiah throws Nick Mondo over the top rope. Singles now for that holy roller, and he nails it. Nails the holy roller on Nick Mondo. The Messiah may be making a big mistake here by taking this match to the outside. Both wrestlers now slow to get to their feet. Nick Mondo trading shots. Remember, Nick Mondo got thrown off of that big balcony. He's not afraid about going outside. Right into that big pole. That's got to hurt. And don't forget, Eric, on March tonight, we explode back in the South Philadelphia for more live CZW action. Absolutely. And the winner of this match would wind up facing Adam Flash, I believe, on that night. And what an opportunity it would be for the Messiah if he could pull a win out from underneath. Sick Nick Mondo here tonight. I'm under the impression that the winner of this match will get the shot at Adam Flash. The Messiah said right into the guardrail. And they are steel guardrails, Eric. About 75 pounds apiece. Absolutely. Nick Mondo with a chair right to the back. Nick Mondo doesn't care. He doesn't give a damn about rules. He doesn't give a damn about the Messiah. The Messiah had control of this match. He was totally in control when his match was inside the ring. Sick Nick Mondo is psychotic. And he is truly going to cave the head in of the Messiah. Sick Nick Mondo, a multi-time Iron Man champion. Also a former World Tag Team champion. Part of the big deals associated with Zandig. Eric, I didn't know this match was anything goes. At this point in time, it looks like anything could happen in this match, and it is anything goes. I wonder if the Messiah knew the rules before he signed off for this match. I don't think he really cares. I don't think he really cares. Sick and tired of wrestling for that tissue company out in California. Comes here for some real competition. Tissue company? You know what I'm talking about. Oh, you really know what I'm talking about. The Messiah now. The Messiah appears to be busted open right above his right eye, Eric. Finds a table. Setting up a table of his own. Looks like things could fall, could fall apart very quickly here. At this point in the match, look at Nick Mondo here, stalking Messiah, stalking him. Throws a chair right at him. He doesn't care. That's a steel chair. You know what he thinks of that reputation of Messiah? He can care less. He spits right at it. Nick Mondo with the right hand and another. The Messiah right now looks to be in a lot of trouble. And a reversal. Right in that steel rail there, Eric. That pole, that metal steel pole. Both wrestlers have had their backs going to the steel poles, going to the steel guard rails. The punishment has to take an effect at some point during this matchup. The Messiah right now in control of the match. Roll sick Nick Mondo into the ring. The fans loving every minute of this. They wanted this. They got it. We listen to them here. Big right hands there by the Messiah. Big chop on the sick Nick Mondo. The big boot to the midsection. I like some police that just ignore their fans. They can care less what they want. Nick Mondo, look at the athleticism. Nick Mondo with that background of French Sabate and yoga. Do you mean the Hey Yo Federation? You know what I'm talking about. The what you're going to do. You know Federation. what I'm talking about. Take your shots. And a big roundhouse once again. And another. And another. All right, and up already. Gonna, gonna He's take tied up in the ropes there, Eric. Rob Hartog, he should be doing his job. Double feet to the face. Whatever happened to the five count rule? Whatever happened to the rules? This is not an Iron Man match. Looks like he's got a trash can. That's not meant to be a, a be used as a weapon. Sick Nick Mondo now puts that trash can right on the head of the Messiah. Nick Mondo in absolute control at Looking this point. Looking for fan approval, Eric. Possessed. Up and over. Springs up. And a 
big springboard leg drop, and he's truly going to cave in the head, going to cave in the face of Messiah. Why? Because the Messiah is prettier than the Sick Nick Mondo? I don't know. Sick Nick Mondo jealous of the Messiah. Bam! Look at him out of the park. He's out bringing of the park, his bell, man. Eric. Out of the park. A great slam by Nick Mondo. What a tremendous match this is, Eric. It can go anyone's way. Absolutely. What kind of defense can the Messiah mount at this point? Messiah can barely stand on his feet. Nick Mondo springs up top. Has him up. Oh! oh! Big drop kick there by Sick Nick Mondo from the top rope. And the Messiah never even seen it coming. Absolutely. What do you think's going through the mind of the Messiah? All he's doing right now is looking around at a dark room, can't see a thing, feeling a face getting caved in. Finally gets that trash can off his head. He needs some reconstructive plastic surgery. Fortunately for him, he lives out in California, right in the heart of it. Probably walk around the corner and get that. The Messiah's ears are ringing, Eric. He's bleeding out of his face. Nick Mondo, look at him. Just a man possessed at this point. Nick Mondo is just having a great time out there. Oh! Over. Oh! Excuse me. Excuse me, Nick Mondo. There goes your World War II Japanese kamikaze pilot. Nick Mondo, up and over, takes his own body out. And that may be the difference in this matchup for the Messiah. You're not going to get action like this anywhere else. Only a fake UTV. I don't think... Oh, look at the Messiah. He helps Sick Nick Mondo roll back in the ring, which is a smart thing to do, Eric. You can sit at home and watch this comfortably in your own home. Bam! The best seat in the house is right here when we return on March 9th to the CZW Arena. Big springboard leg drop there by the Messiah, but only a two count. The Messiah right now with a chair. Messiah with a big right hand. Nick Mondo, all that showboating that he did earlier on is going to cost him. Nick Mondo up and over. Both wrestlers so similar in styles. You're seeing a lot of counters by each wrestler. And look at a big right hand. Let's Nick Mondo think a little bit about it before he hits him. I don't think Nick Mondo even thinks, Eric. I don't think he has a brain to think. Bam! Do you see that? His head is hollow! So much for that brain! So much for that brain! I told you he ain't got nothing upstairs, sick Nick Mondo. Messiah now throws that chair. Nails the Messiah. Nails the Messiah. Using that chair back and forth. Oh! That's it, Eric! Are you Someone kidding me? Someone call 911! Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, Nick Mondo? Are you kidding me, Messiah? That's it, Eric! It's over! My God! My God! He made me dead after that! All the Messiah's got to do is throw Nick Mondo back into the ring, and this match is over. John House, any other wrestler, I'd say it's over. Any other wrestler, anywhere else, I'd say it's over. But Nick Mondo, we've seen that kid get dragged through light tubes, fall off a table, fall off of a balcony, and get back on his feet. The man is superhuman with the amount of threshold, the threshold, the amount of pain that he can endure. The Messiah is not in there with just any other wrestler. What's he got in his hand? He has a bag, Eric. Maybe there's doo-doo in there. What? Maybe there's doo-doo in oh. there. What? What does he got in that bag? He bring his lunch with him? Yeah. It's Thumbtacks. Excuse me. It's Thumbtacks. Excuse me. It's Thumbtacks. The Messiah is known for his experience in Thumbtack matches. He is known for Thumbtacks. He made his reputation on thumbtack matches out west. Things are about to get downright sick here tonight on Fake New TV. They're thumbtacks! Did you see the tongue of the Messiah sticking out of his mouth? He is salivating right now. The Messiah made his reputation on thumbtack matches. It's the beginning of the end, Eric. Nick Mondo this made his is... reputation. Whoa! The amount of pain Whoa! he can endure. Mondo misses our stump tax on the Messiah. This is like a suicide mission right now. Both wrestlers fighting for their lives, fighting for the match, fighting the opportunity to face Adam Flash. Uh oh! Nick Mondo with the Messiah. Looked like he was going to go for the assault driver. But Messiah instead rolls through, countering the assault driver. 
with a pinning attempt. Messiah has done his homework on Nick Mondo. Don't forget about those thumbtacks. Takes the shirt off of him. If you're going to go through thumbtacks, you're going to go through thumbtacks CDW style, Messiah. Wait a minute! And he can't see. He can't see. Assault driver. Assault driver. Assault. Oh! Assault driver. Oh! Wait a minute, Adam Flash! Wait a minute! Rob Hortog out of the ring! Adam Flash, out of the ring. champion! Oh, well, Rob, Rob Hortog was doing his job! What's his He'd problem? be inside the ring What's right his now! Problem? And through everything these two have endured, the Adam Flash come out of here and ruin it! And look at the thumbtacks buried into the back of the Messiah, Eric! Look at that! Look at his back! Look at that! It's shiny! Look at how red it is! Look at the marks back there! It's like connect the dots! With his back! Couple right hands, those thumbtacks still in the ring! Nick Mono up. Yeah! A face buster. A face buster into the thumbtacks. A face buster into the thumbtacks. The Messiah. Ow! The Messiah right now nails the fall from grace. The fall from grace for Nick Mondo. And that's it. And that's it, Eric. What a matchup. What a damn matchup. Yes! What a damn matchup! And if it wasn't for Adam Flash, Nick oh, Mondo would have won that match. Adam Flash never laid a hand on Nick Mondo. That disgusts me. What are you talking that about? That disgusts me. Is the Messiah at bed with Adam Flash and the Rajis and Lobo, or is Adam Flash just playing favorites? What a matchup! What a matchup! Unbelievable. Mondo's pulling the tax out. And this is what CDW is all about. This is exactly what CDW is all about. doing? Dahmer looks incensed. Dahmer just looks incensed. Are these Ballards taking Dahmer's shot? How many shots are VD going to get at the tag team titles anyway, Eric? You know what? They earned it. Boys, the World Tag Team Champions, Dahmer with the team. Ah, yes, the back with the bat, the back with the bat. 
The Backstreet Boys are all over. John Dumber, Yakuza kick. Yakuza kick. Yakuza yeah, that's kick. That's what I'm talking about, Eric. And the Backstreet Boys have never looked better against one wrestler. Wait a minute, what are they doing? Johnny Cashmere and Max Smack. What is he? What is he out of his mind? Hey, yes! He's gone! He My did gone. it! John, he did it! Get up off the floor, you just fell off your chair! There's an earthquake in here! Cashmere with the bad back and all! The full the moon champs, salt. Eric! The Backstreet Boys have taken over! The full moon salt! The full moon salt! Trent Acid, Johnny Cashmere, out of their minds, and here come the Ballard Brothers! Who are the Ballard Brothers? Shane and Shannon! And who's that? Shane number one, Shannon number 23 with the big homo, cheerleader Melissa outside of the ring. The Ballard Brothers, one of the most dominating tag teams on the West Coast today, have traveled here tonight to CZW to challenge the Backseat Boys. And look at them, right across the back. This is not fair, Eric. A high stick to the back. The Ballard Brothers, sunset flip. Excuse me, hip toss on his shoulders. You gotta be kidding me. Eric, the Backseat Boys were, pre were prepared for Domor and Valentine, not the Ballard Brothers. The Ballard Brothers hit the power play all over Trent Acid and Johnny Cashmere. Johnny Cashmere, look at him. Out of his mind. The Ballard Brothers now on fire. Shannon, number 23, Shane, number oh. one. Out of their mind. That's five minutes for rough. Oh, I see where the Ballard Brothers' minds are in the gutter. That's five minutes for roughing. And here comes cheerleader Melissa into the ring. Shannon, Shannon have taken the backseat boys by storm. Nobody expected these Ballard brothers to show up. They are one of the most dominating tag teams on the West Coast. They're out there. They're not wrestling here, but now they're where everybody wants to be, and that is here in the CZW Arena. Eric Arjula, the backseat boys were prepared for Va Valentine and Dahmer VT. They weren't prepared for these Ballard brothers. We don't even know who they are. Trent Aston with the mic. All right, Acid. Shit up! You shit up, John. You shit up. You know who they are? Show them some respect! They don't look like champions at the moment. Yeah, shut up! They look like two confused wrestlers right now. Looks like they're wrestling their very first match. Looks so confused in there. Out of your mind, Cashmere. Yeah, he says so. The paranoid schizophrenic. You go back to California and leave the Northeast to guys that know how to own it. Please. Cashmere looks like he hasn't taken his Prozac today. He's so incensed. It's real simple. Sexually harassed? Yes, yeah, sexually harassed! This match! Sure, you're gonna slow. Hey, hey! If we hit the word, find him! What the hell is wrong here? Get out of here! Don't let the door hit you in the no, air! No, wait a minute! What a jack! They said, don't say here. that! And these Ballard brothers are eating it up. They don't look like champions right now. These backseat boys look like two scared wrestlers. Whoa! Oh, Melissa, ex a excuse me! Excuse me! That's the cheerleader! Shane and Shannon all over the backseat boys. You know, a lot of wrestlers out there, well, just a few, watch fake you TV and maybe write down the moves of the backseat boys, go out there, maybe go to other parts of the country. Which one's Shane and which one's Shannon? Let me finish my point. Go to other parts of the country, try and pick out moves here. What are they going to pick out now? They're going to copy Acid's promo. They're going to go out to California and do Acid's promo. I think he's not going to know about it. They're going to go out there now and take out, take Cashmere's, take Cashmere's move when he body slammed Big Mac Smack. Look at the big boot to the face. Somebody will copy that too, I'm sure. Very disrespectful in professional wrestling. Eric Arjula, a lot of tag teams copy the backseat boys. Some even here on the East Coast. I've heard that.
I've heard that, but they don't do that here on the East Coast. Look at that, like a battering ram. All right now, Trent Acid. Up on the back, and the Ballard Brothers sit out. They nail it with the blue line. They nail Trent Acid with the blue line. The Ballard Brothers, what little I know about them, were drafted. Actual former NHL hockey players, drafted by the Toronto Maple Leafs in round 230, John Hayes. 230? 230. I didn't think there was 230 rounds in a draft. What are you trying to say? Vancouver would never use them. You're calling them liars? Shannon Ballard, Johnny Cashmere. Bam! Ass with a missile drop kick. Bam! That's what I'm talking about. That's why they're the champions, Eric. You know, somebody's at home writing it down now. Johnny Leap from Trent Acid missile drop kick. Shoots him off into the rope. Johnny up and over. Oh, look at the psychology there. A big worrying elbow. Trent Acid hits the rope like a house of fire. As Cashmere now finally looking like the champions fit to represent it. Bam! To represent CZW. That's what I'm talking about, Eric. And that is why they are the CZW World Tag Team Champions. The most dominant tag team on the West Coast has just went face to face with the most dominant tag team on the East Coast. They're trying to ask mocking them. Do you think the Hate Club are watching this match, Eric Ardulo? What's going through the minds of Nick Gage and Nate Hatred? I'm sure they're salivating at the opportunity to get their hands on these two pretty boys, Acid and Cashmere. You know Gage and Hatred would tear these two apart. Oh, so that's the reason why Hatred and Gage are ducking the backseat boys. They're not ducking anybody. At least that's what the backseat boys are saying. Shane Ballard now on his knees. Cashmere now, the Johnny Cashmere fan club acknowledging their president. A couple of big right hands by Mr. Unbreakable, whose concentration looks like it's been broken. Johnny Cashmere is completely lost, and thanks to John Zanding, he made Johnny Cashmere what he is today. Absolutely, a tag in. Real interesting to note that the Backseat Boys have not defended their tag team championship belts in several months here at CZW. Could they be rusty here tonight? What are you talking to? Oh, do we see any rest there on part of the champions, Eric? Yeah, they look like two rookies in the beginning of the match that have never wrestled before. Do you realize the backseats have defeated every single tag team here at CZW with the exception for the Hate Club? And they are sick and tired of hearing people like you and these fans saying that they are ducking Nick Gage in their hatred. Right now, Shane Ballard up and over with a sunset flip. What's right. Logan doing? What's Logan doing? Brian Logan had no business interjecting himself into this match. There it is again. And a big roll up and a kick out. Shane and Shannon, ba Shannon Ballard came here with a purpose tonight. Big crucifix. What is he doing? A big roaring elbow by Brian Logan and a kick out. Wait a minute, what's Brian Logan have against the backseat boys? He don't like rubbery spear cashmere at the cage of death three. Acid and cashmere now with a backseat driver. I'm sure somebody's writing that one down at home too. You'll see that out on the West Coast next month. Brian Logan better be careful, that may happen to him. Johnny Cashmere now sends a chain battle like a house of fire in a mist. Johnny Cashmere won for the spear. Trent Acid and Johnny Cashmere have kept a very high pace for this matchup. Trent Acid with a Bow! wheelbarrow suplex, a wheelbarrow suplex. Very fast pace. That's matchup. what I'm talking about, Eric. Look at the tag team continuity on behalf of the backseat boys. Johnny Cashmere now has a chair in his hand. Trent Acid now goes for a cover on, a cover on Shane Ballard. The Ballard brothers look like they're in a lot of trouble. Huh. From being from the West Coast, they're pretty white, Eric. They look like they're, what? They look like they're short-handed on the power play right now. Johnny Cashmere and Trent Acid dominating. The most dominant tag team on the West Coast right now. Everybody's talking about CZW, the hottest rising company in professional wrestling today. Everybody wants to be a part of it. And the Ballards have stepped up to the plate tonight and in a big way. In That's a big, right. big way. And South Philadelphia will once again be a part of it on March the 9th for live CZW action. Absolutely. Shane Ballard, Trent Acid blocks him, turns it in its hard to, to see where we are, but it looks like an abdominal stretch of shorts. Johnny Cashmere with the chair. Oh, look at that. 
Look at Shane Ballard head tossing Trent Asin right into that chair. Cheerleader Melissa and Shannon trying to get Shane, trying to get to him. Get her to make that tag. A tag into Shannon. Shannon, a very fresh man, hits him with a big clothesline. And another big clothesline. We make Bob Probert proud. And Bam! Ducks under. Big DDT. Johnny Cashmere misses. Shannon Ballard spins. Oh, oh be what was that? That's a penalty box. How'd you like to wind up in that penalty box, John? Eric Gargiulo, the champion's got to be careful right here. They know nothing about these Ballard brothers. Shannon and Shane all over Trent Acid. The momentum has gone the way of the Ballard brothers. Look at Johnny Cashmere right now. Monkey flipping his own partner. Ducks under their clothesline and a clothesline of his own. Acid is also the current holder of the Big Japan and CZW Junior Heavyweight Championships. The Ballard brothers now reversing things. Two big low blows there by the Ballard brothers. Call it like you see it, Eric. Absolutely, the Ballard brothers. All right, what are they doing? A dance in there? You're gonna be kidding me? Are you out of your mind, ass in the Cashmere? Doing a dance in there? Who choreographed that? Shannon Ballard all over Trent Asset. Trent Asset, Yakuza kick! Yakuza kick! Yakuza kick! Shannon Ballard went off his feet. Yakuza kick out of nowhere, Eric. Trent Asset now looks under the ring. Shane Ballard all over Johnny Cashmere on the other side. A big chair. You'd think looking at the backseat boards with their tans, they just flew in from the West Coast. What's Trent Asset going to do with that chair, Eric? Trent Asset setting up a chair. The longer they're in the ring with these Ballard brothers, it's less time they got to spend in there with Nick Gage. All right, you know, I'm getting a little sick and tired. i have been making a mockery out of the Tag Team Championships here tonight. Wait. The Ballard brothers now. Oh! They just used that chair against Trent Acid. That was totally illegal, Eric. Shane Ballard goes for the cover. Brian Logan should have got one of those Ballard brothers outside of the ring. Maybe Logan will wind up using the same move to Acid or Cashmere before the match is over. Cheerleader Melissa on the apron. Cashmere with the spear. Cashmere with the spear. Hey, yeah. Cheerleader Melissa yes. off her feet. You know that guy yes. hates women. Ha -ha. You know Cashmere hates ha -ha. women. Nah, you hate women. You know Cashmere ha -ha. can't stand women. Cashmere's got more girlfriends than you got toes and fingers, guard. What are they doing? John Dahmer out here. Dahmer now to the aid of cheerleader Melissa. Wait a minute, she likes it. It allows enough time for Shane and Shannon. Cheerleader Melissa up top. High cross body. That's going to be it. We no. are champions. No. Champions. We got to do champions. No. No. I love it. We got new champions. We got new champions. Someone's got to do something about this, Eric. Wait a minute. I think the party is over. Because that music signifies State Athletic Commission representative, that son of a bitch, the Rock and Rebel. He's wearing a Backseat Boys t-shirt. What? He's wearing a Backseat Boys t-shirt. Oh, he hates women. He said, hold on a second. The whole night. What? And fire Brian Logan. Fire the referee. This sucks. This really stinks. Oh, I'd like to see that happen, Big Shot. Look at Dahmer, nose to nose. Two 
months in a row we've gone through this. Two months in a row. Probably gonna cop a feel in there too. That freak. Yeah, beat it! Yeah, take her with you! Hated women! I told you he hated women! Shane Ballard now. Wait a minute! What? The Bam! The T gimmick! The T gimmick! Leave her alone! Leave her alone! The Undisputed Tag Team Champions, you had them! No! The Cradle Breaker! Uh -huh. The Cradle Breaker! Yes! He just broke the cradle of yes. Jolita Melissa! Uh -huh. The Undisputed they Tag are, Team Champions! They are two of the most disgraceful champions! Two of the most disgraceful champions I have ever seen! And here comes Dahmer! No! There you go! That's what Dahmer's got to say about it! That's what Dahmer's got to say about it! He's going after him! That rumble makes me sick. Dahmer better watch out. He may not ever get that tag team title shot. He keeps his up. Somebody better do a story about our corrupt athletic commission. Undisputed, my ass. I'll dispute it. Undisputed. I'll dispute it. I'll dispute it. Undisputed. You make me sick, too. You make me sick. Will you shut up. These guys, they come all the way from the West Coast here about CZW, the land of opportunity here. And this, this is opportunity that just got smacked Eric, right in their face. Eric, it was three on two the whole match. You heard the commissioner. He seen it. Kiss my ass. Nick Gage will tell you himself 
He was the very first World Heavyweight Champion, and he wants to be the very next CZW World Heavyweight Champion. Justice Payne, the only wrestler at CZW ever to hold every single title belt that CZW has ever had. The Iron Man belt, he's held it. The Junior belt, he's held it. The Tag Team belt, he's held it. He even beat, he even, he even had that interpromotional belt that CZW once had. You know where he won that match? You know where he won that belt? Right here, defeating Nick Gage in May of 1999. Hey, I told you all that! You didn't tell me. I anything. told you all that, what you just said. I think anybody at home believes that. However, Eric, tonight, Justice Payne's toughest challenge to date is the future of hardcore Nick Gage. Justice Payne has defended that belt against every CCW superstar and other superstars in his business all around the world. But tonight is his toughest test in the future of hardcore Nick Gage. This is the match that everybody has been talking about, the match that everybody's wanted since CZW took that next level, since they took that next step, since we became a television company, since we entered the CZW arena, since we came to that new level, everybody has wanted to see it. Gage and pain, Gage and pain, And look at it, the history, the rivalries. When you think back at rivalries in professional wrestling, some of the great ones, Rhodes and Flair, Brody and Abby, the Von Erics, the Freebirds, but the rivalry that the fans sitting in this building tonight, the fans watching at home tonight on fake new television will be talking about years to come, years down the line, is this one right here. Nick Gage and Justice Payne for that World Heavyweight Championship belt. What do you think is going through the mind right now of the champion? What do you think is going through the mind I'll tell you what's going through the mind of Nick Gage right now. He knows Justice Payne might be the champ, but Nick Gage knows that Nick Gage is the man. You know, Justice Payne, he can come in here and try and psych out most of his opponents, but Nick Gage is not a man that's going to be easily psyched out. When it has mattered, when the belts have been on the line, Nick Gage has come up huge against Justice Payne. The last time that these two have fought in a title matchup, John House, in CZW, was for the World Tag Team Championship. And in that matchup, Nick Gage and Nate Hatred ended the long reign of the champions, Justice Payne and the White Beater. And the challenger comes out on fire, but look at the champ, big left hands into the forehead of hardcore Nick Gage. Justice Payne now all over Nick Gage. What a rivalry this is. This one could be over early, or it could go all night. Nick Gage right now, what a forearm, what a forearm. Look at the world champion now, sent into the ropes. Up and down. Nick Gage is an angry man, and he's taking all that anger out on our champion, Justice Payne. The future of the hardcore Nick Gage, a member of the new hate club. Nate Hatred is not here today. Keep in mind that Nate Hatred, he's not just, he's not in the building, he's not even in this country. He's over in Japan competing tonight. Nick Gage is all alone as he faces Justice Payne. Nick Gage, in his mind, doesn't need anyone to beat Justice Payne. He don't need that hatred. He can do it himself. He's the man. Nick Gage, a former Iron Man champion, has held that belt many times. Most recently, that has been his most recent belt that he has held here in CZW. The tag team division, him and Nate Hatred have dominated that tag team division, but he has yet to reclaim the glory of the world champion. Here it is, Eric! In a long time. Quite a few years. Just as pain of, oh! And Nick Gage is feeling it. We're in the center of the ring. Justice Payne ducks under, belly to belly overhead throw. If Justice Payne was smart, he'd keep this match inside the ring and try to out finesse hardcore Nick Gage. Justice Payne, the franchise player, the ace of our company here at CZW. Justice Payne makes a quick exit. Goes Nick to Gage to do. I know Nick Gage would take exception to what you just said, Eric. Nick Gage right now very slow to get to his feet. Justice Payne. Doesn't have many friends left around here at CZW. Do you think anybody cares in the back about Justice P? It's sick and tired of his act. Walking around here, that, that attitude, that cockiness, that arrogance. Nobody can stand him. Bam! That's two! 
Look at him driving ahead of the World Heavyweight Champion into the canvas. Finally lost an inch or two off his height. Spins around. Oh! 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 And Nick Gage wasted no time taking it to the champ. The world champion hasn't been powerbombed like that in a long time. These two have not met in a singles match in CZW since March of the year 2000. That's a long time, John House. And in that matchup, Nick Gage was victorious. And Nick Gage, it doesn't mean anything what he did two years ago. It, what it means is tonight, if he's victorious tonight, he walks out of here the new champ. If you're a Justice Payne fan, what you can't hold on to was the last time that these two met. There were no belts on the line, but where something counted, it was back at our inaugural television taping, take one, in which Justice Payne won a four-way match in which Nick Gage was involved in to earn a shot at then the champion, Zandig, who of course lost at the wife beater, and the rest is history. And look at the champ wrapped up in the guardrail over there. Nick Gage staying on top of the champs. You know, there's a lot of schools out there that try and take fans' money, try and rip them off from them. But you know what? You want to talk about a commercial for our school? This is our commercial right here. This is our advertisement. Two of the first four students of the CZW Wrestling Academy right now battling it out in a sold-out CZW arena. They're headlining, Eric. Absolutely for the CZW World Heavyweight title. Nick Gage drops the elbow on Justice Ping. You know, we would have had this match happen last month if it wasn't for the Rock and Rebel and the State Athletic Commission. And Justice Ping just barely hung on to that title last month, Eric. Justice Ping, of course, very successful in his defense against the Messiah who answered the challenge. But of course, it was Nick Gage that was the first man to step up and answer the challenge, John House. Big elbow there by Nick Gage, right between the eyes of Justice Payne. Nick Gage has been in intense training. He's locked himself up in a basement for the last two weeks. Doing nothing but watching Justice Payne teams, watching videos, scouting them, seeing what he does differently, what he does new since the last time they fought a singles match in March of the year 2000. The problem with Nick Gage is, is that he's a loose cannon, Eric. He's always angry, he's always mad. Look at the intensity of Nick Gage. Look at the intensity. He's going to take that go to the of his face. Bam! Who's the man, John House? Who's the man, Eric? Nick Gage, it's that controlled anger. That controlled intensity. It's uncontrollable anger, Eric. And that is the key to this matchup, John. The key to this matchup for Justice Payne to take Nick Gage off of his game plan. To take him out by getting him angry, getting him frustrated. Nick Gage right now takes Justice Payne. Looks like he's going to drop him in a neck breaker. And he does, takes Justice Payne off his feet with velocity. Well, at least we can tell that Nick Gage has done his homework, Eric. The champ is on his back looking up at the lights. Nick Gage, we've seen him walk into CZW many times, taking his opponents for granted. Not really caring much about who is on the opposite side of the ring, but just wanting to hurt somebody, just wanting to kill somebody. But tonight, believe me when I tell you, he cares. Eric Cordula, have you ever seen Justice Payne so dominated in his match? Never. And Nick Gage just sucking in those blows right now. Bam! Pain. He just spiked him with that DDT. Those kicks, those roundhouse kicks. Nick Gage is just taking them in. He's feeding off of them. Using them as fuel. Both men are down, Eric. Have you ever seen such a hard-hitting match in CZW, John? Have you ever seen anything like it? Justice Payne has taken most of the beating thus far in this matchup. If he wants to retain that title, he has to turn this match around and turn it around quick. It's not going to be an easy win for Justice Payne. It's not going to be an easy win for Nick Gage. These two wrestlers are going to have to endure a lot tonight to defeat one another. Drag and screw leg whip by the World Heavyweight Champion into an SDF. Accomplishing two things here. One, slows down the momentum of hardcore Nick Gage, who has dominated the match at this point. Number two, wears down his challenger. Good thinking in a slap on that STF, but the champ is too close to the ropes, Eric. Of course, remember, keep in mind, Nate Hatred is not here. He is not in the building. He's not in the country. So Justice Payne will have a fair matchup, one-on-one. -on -one Why do you keep Gage. bringing that up, Eric? And Why course, do you keep bringing it up that he's not here? And, of course, Hardcore Nick Gage will have a fair match. Because nobody's going to come to the aid of Justice Payne. Nobody can stand him anymore. But I understand the Baxi boys don't even talk to him anymore. 
Justice Payne with a leapfrog. Kick to the midsection. That's a ball. Oh! Spiking him in the middle of the ring with that power bomb. The history between these two wrestlers. The history. One of the greatest rivalries here in season will be maybe the greatest of all time. Two guys that pioneered this company, put it on the map. And Nick Gage inside the front row, Eric. And when have you ever seen Nick Gage tossed around like this? Eric Gargiulo, you knew coming into this match what kind of match it was going to be. Very high impact, very painful. Justice Payne, he's going to have to clear a lot of air to hit. Oh! And he does. And he does. It's going to come down to who makes the first mistake and who capitalizes on it. And unlike a lot of Justice Payne's other challengers, they don't care. he doesn't care about being a nice guy. He doesn't care about taking a shortcut. Nick Gage will do whatever it takes to earn a victory here tonight. Save with the champ. Nick Gage tried to break Justice Payne's back about a month ago here in South Philadelphia. And he should have. You know why? Because the champ has no spine. Because he would have wrestled Nick Gage last month here. You know the it. champ has no spine. He's defending that title against every challenger that has stepped up to his face, Eric. Didn't defend it against Nick Gage last month. He's defeated John Zantig. He's defeated Nick Mondo. He's defeated White Peter. The list goes on and on. Just as Payne throws Nick Gage into those bleachers. They are going into the crowd now. You knew it wasn't going to take this long. It wasn't going to take that long for these two to go outside of the ring. There was virtually no one left for Justice Payne to defend that title against until Nick Gage stepped up to the plate. And how do you think Justice Payne feels about Nick Gage walking around here calling himself the hate club with Nate Hatred? Justice Payne was one of the original members of that hate club. Let me tell you what really bothers Justice Payne being the champ is the fact that Nick Gage runs around here saying that he is the man. He is the man. He is the man. But Justice Payne's the champ, Eric. It's been a long, long time since Justice Payne has beat Nick Gage in a singles match. And if you look at the record, if you look at the win loss column, it wasn't many times. Nick Gage earned those victories more so than Justice Payne ever did. Outnumbered him in victories to losses. Where they go, Gargiulo? Big left hand there by the champ. What a hard-hitting matchup. You gotta hear that from here. We're all the way across the arena. Eric, they're up there in the bleachers with the psycho fans. The psycho fans? What are you talking about? Our fans are psychos. Justice Payne now has Nick Cage. You know, we talked earlier, John, that Nick Cage dominated this match. As soon as they went outside of the ring, it's been all Justice Payne. That's almost hard to believe, Eric. If you told me without me seeing I wouldn't believe you. Nick Gage is nuts. You know, this building is housed a lot of the greatest title matches of all time, but this one has the opportunity to go there with the rest of them. Are you kidding me, Justice Payne? Nick Gage is getting a beating. He's going to be busted open, getting tossed around the stairs. I don't think I've ever seen Nick Gage tossed around like this. The champ just threw Nick Gage right down those bleachers. Justice Payne now. Where they got him? Gage. Couple of left hands in a southpaw. They're going outside of the building. They're going outside of the building. We can't see what's going on. I can only imagine. You better hope your limo's not parked out front and have a broken window or two. Eric Gargiulo, do pins balls count anywhere in South Philadelphia? It's CZW. Justice Payne now bringing his challenger back to the ring. Dewey's back. Why's he ever not mad? Dewey has managed some of the greatest tag team champions of all time, but he has never managed a world heavyweight champion. But that could all change here tonight, Eric. He's managed a junior heavyweight champion. He's managed an Ironman champion. He's managed tag team champions, but never a world heavyweight champion. Wow. If Nick Gage wins here tonight, Dewey will be the first ever Grand Slam manager at CZW. Absolutely, Justice Payne up top. Nick Gage having a hard time. Bam! With the blockbuster, big blockbuster by the champ. Look at the champ. He doesn't even look phased. He doesn't even look tired. Looks like he's just getting started in there. The champ doesn't want to pin Nick Gage. He wants to make him pay for that sneak attack Nick Gage took out on the champ a month ago. You know, there are some wrestlers in our company that have a professional rivalry. 
inside of the ring they don't like each other outside of the ring they respect each other these two can't stand one another they hate each other's guts almost like the way i feel about you looked like justice Payne was going to try and spike him with that ddt once again nick gage is a bloody mess guard to a boom big right hand there by the champ look at the blood of nick gage all over the body of justice Payne. I don't think I've ever seen Nick Gage manhandled like this, ever. Nick Gage has just been completely taken out of his game right now in this matchup. Eric, this match is far from over, guard Julo. You know, it's going to take a hell of a lot more than that to put away hardcore Nick Gage, and Justice Payne knows it. That's why he's staying on top of the challenger. Nick Gage with a reversal, charges in. Justice Payne with the reversal. Nick Gage charges him once again. And a big forearm smash. Big block there by Nick Gage. See how Nick Gage blocked that kick from Justice Payne. Nick Gage followed behind him with an elbow right to the center of the back. And Nick Gage is already softening up the champ's back. His body's got to be tingling from that. You know, upsets happen all the time in sports and wrestling all the time. We just saw it in football. But what an upset it would be if Justice Payne was to walk in here and just manhandle Nick Gage. Not just a beater, but just a manhandle Nick Gage, like we've seen so far. Anything can happen, Eric. He is our only Grand Slam champion in our history. Nick Gage with a jawbreaker there. Nick Gage right now has him up. Throwing it back, suplex. And if Nick Gage is just getting warmed up, the World Heavyweight Champion is in a lot of trouble. Dewey outside, setting up some chairs. Nick Gage and Justice Payne. They look like they were both involved in a train wreck in there. The blood is just pumping out of the head of Nick Gage, Eric. Both wrestlers unable to get to their feet, both laying down, trying to get as much time as they can to recuperate. Justice Payne right now, Nick Gage, the first to his feet. Nick Gage will at the end of the tunnel, has to be that World Heavyweight Champion, but for Justice Payne, he doesn't have to beat Nick Gage to win the match. He does not have to pin him. He can lose by disqualification. He can lose by a countout, and he still walks away with the belt. You're absolutely right, guard, Joe. Nick Gage has to beat Justice Payne, has to pin Justice Payne, or make him submit to become the World Heavyweight Champion. Nick Gage with a more methodical pace. Tonight, look at him wiping the blood off on the shirt of Rob Hart. That's a new shirt. That is a new shirt. Nick Gage right now wrestling a more methodical pace, picking the champion apart. Wrestling more of a controlled matchup tonight here in the CZW Arena. What strength, what strength, but not enough. Nick Gage has him up, big vertical suplex. Bam, brain buster! Brain buster! And he likes to call that the hardcore drop. Beating many wrestlers here with that hardcore drop. Nick Gage getting up very slow from all the blood loss, Cardulo. Nick Gage, what's he signal one more time? How much more does the champ have left? How much more does either one of these two combatants have left, Eric? That's the question. Who wants it more? Nick Gage right now. Looks like he was going to go for another hardcore drop. Justice Payne right to the midsection. Nick Gage using Rob Hartog to balance himself in the middle of the ring. And he's Here it is! He's going to break him in half. Justice Payne. And he nails Rob Hartog. Here it is, God Julie. Yes! He's going to break him in half. Here it is! And he just broke the champ in half. He just broke the champ in half. Nick Gage has got it. He can feel it. All he's going to do is cover him. We got a new champ. We got the referee. It can't end like this, John. Nick Gage signaling for the frog splash. Nick Gage going up. Justice P not moving. Nick Gage up top. If he nails this frog splash, it'll be all over. Wait a minute, we got a fan that just jumped up. Oh! Wait a Who is that? Somebody call security. Somebody call security. We got a fan. I don't even know who this guy is. Who is that? 
Justice Payne has no friends left around here. There's nobody from here. I don't know who this guy is. Every time, I don't understand it. The Justice Payne outsmart Nick Gage tonight. Is this some kind of an insurance policy or is he just a fan? Eric Gargiulo, who is that? I don't know. I've never seen the guy before in my life. Look at this guy. What's he got? What's he doing? That's Nick Gage. That's Nick Gage. Does he realize handcuffs? He's, he's got handcuffs. And remember, Nate Hatred is not here. And look at the dude. The dude. Look at the dude. The dude. Bow. Bow. And Justice Payne just did the dude. Nick Gage is handcuffed. He's handcuffed. And remember, there's no need hatred here tonight. It looks like Justice Payne has outsmarted his challenger once again. He can't find any friends in our company. That's what. That's what you gotta like about the champ, Eric. Oh yeah, he I love outsmarts him. everyone that gets in his way. Real popular guy. Everyone that tries to steal that title from him, he outsmarts him. Doesn't have any more friends in our company. So That's why I'm pre Let me finish my point. Doesn't have any more friends in our company, so it looked like he went somewhere else to get one. Let yeah. me put the fan out of the front row or something. That's why I'm proud of our champion, Eric. You're proud of this? I'm proud of our champion. You're proud of this? This is how it ends, the legacy of Payne and Gage. Bam! This is how this legacy oh. ends. Oh! 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 oh. Look at this! Oh! Nick Gage looking right into the eyes of Justice Payne and this other wrestler as they slam the chair right into the head. That's the fire! That's the fire I'm talking about in Justice Payne. Nick Gage looking right into the eyes of his assailants. Nick Gage don't look like the man now, does he, Gargiulo? Oh, this guy is outside of the ring. You gotta be kidding me. He's gotta be out of his mind. There's nothing professional about this. There's nothing ethical about this. Oh! I don't even know how to call this. Makes me sick. And what a still, sicko. What a sicko. Heavyweight champion. And they're not finished. And why doesn't that surprise me? Why doesn't that surprise me at all? I've never seen Nick Gage beaten so bad, Eric. And who is this guy? And why is he all over Rob Hortog? And I don't know who this man is. I don't know who this assailant is. Looks like he's got the best body a needle can produce, I'll tell you that much. What? You know what I'm saying. Enough said. Are you trying to say that I, uh... I'm not saying anything about you. Oh! Oh! And here comes security, finally, doing their job. Instead of walking around the building trying to pick up women, to get in the ring and separate this. Are you sticking up for Nick Gage, Gardulo? I think this is sick. It was just a few weeks ago you were out here calling Nick Gage a bastard. He may be a bastard, but he don't deserve that. He don't deserve that. I've never seen Nick Gage being handled like this before. Who is this wrestler? Who is this man? I don't know, but I do know who the undisputed world heavyweight champion is, Eric. Look at Justice And that's Justice Payne. Look at that smile on that face, that crooked smile on his face. Like a used car salesman. Makes me sick. I don't see a world champion anywhere that I can be proud of. Please. Look at him smiling like he just accomplished something. Oh, he did, Eric. He Sicko. did. He retained that world heavyweight title. Sicko. Look at this guy. I don't know who he is. I don't know if he's a fan. I don't know if this is... Paid spotting buddy at the gym. Nick Gage needs medical attention in a bad way. 
John, you know that this is not the last we have heard of this. When Need Hatred comes back from Japan, he's going to be upset when the A Club unite as a unit for the first time in months. And it's going to be something that CZW has never seen before. Eric Ardu, the way it looks right now, it's over. Nick Gage isn't even moving. Can you imagine what happens when Need Hatred returns and Nick Gage and Need Hatred are together as a unit, the Hate Club? Nick Gage is being stretched out right now, Eric. He's the loser of this war. You know, there's a hotel room getting destroyed in Okinawa right now. has come down to this there isn't a wrestler in our company that is not watching this match a fan at home a fan here tonight because everybody is affected in some way or another by the result of this matchup Zanding a Lobo the control of season W could be in the hands of that man man should he beat Zanding tonight and Eric Gargiulo Lobo said it himself if you want to do something right you have got to do it yourself he sent out Doomsday Danny Rose. He didn't get the job done. That monster, Glenn Osborne, even though he beat the hell out of John Zanding, he didn't get the job done. So Lobo is a man. He's going to do it himself. John Zanding is going to kill that man you're looking at right there. He is about to die. Die at the hands of Zanding here tonight on Fake You TV. Easier said than done, Gargiulo. Oh, I'll say it. Lobo's been in some of the most brutal matches in the history of CZW. And this match is just as mental as it is physical. It's going to be about my games that these two are going to play with each other. Is Zandik so drunk and consumed with the hatred? that he has for Lobo, that maybe he'll make a mistake. Maybe he'll slip up. Maybe he isn't thinking clearly. Or Lobo, his hatred for Zandig. Is that going to be enough to throw Lobo over the edge? Or is this all just part of his plan since returning in July? Look at John Zandig spinning on all the fans, Eric. And look at Osborne. What's he going to do? Attack Shaft again, our fan in the front row. Looks like John Zanting wants to talk. Hopefully this will be the last time we have to hear him talk on that microphone. He's, pretty, he's beat Doomsday Danny Rose. He's beat Glenn Osborne. He's got one more to go through, and that's Lobo. Look at this ring. Not enough barbed wire? Not enough, he said, Eric. How can get more? Canvas? What is he talking about? How can there not be enough barbed wire? You can't trust John Zandig, Eric. He must have a plan. Again, this could all be a point about the mental edge. The mental game's just a part of what's going to happen in this matchup. And Lobo, what is his health? What is... What is the status of that broken clavicle? Did he ever get surgery on it or not? Nobody knows. He's been very secretive about that. Eric Arjulo, Lobo is injured, okay? He broke his knee, remember? Clavicle. Same thing. Lobo has not wrestled a match since June. But since June, talk about ring rust. 
but maybe it has healed up, and he's letting John Zandig believe that he is injured, giving him that false sense of security. Zandig has wrestled every month here, wrestled in Japan, wrestled all over the world, England, Mexico, a constant schedule. Unlike Lobo, who's done nothing more than call the shots, but has yet to get into the ring. You know, you better be really careful what you say about Sheriff Lobo, Eric. What are they doing to this ring? Because if he wins this match, you know what? You might be bye-bye. You're right. You're absolutely bye -bye. correct. I could be done. These fans be going, nah, 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 nah. He's not going to win. Zandig telling people earlier tonight that he would actually kill Lobo. He could actually kill Lobo here tonight. Are they going to take the ring apart? What kind of a ring? You gotta be kidding me. Are you out of your mind? Wait Are a minute. Are you out of your mind? Is that, is that barbed wire? That is a canvas made of barbed wire. Zandig invented that. Only done once in a match against Kenny Mora and Sapporo. Listen to this crowd. And Zandig, the inventor of this match. What do you think's going through the mind of Lobo right now? Watching the canvas come off of the ring. Lobo doesn't care. Look at this. Zandig invented this match. He invented this match. Only wrestled this match once in his life. There's only been one match ever like this. That is barbed wire, a canvas made of barbed wire. These two Zandig and Lobo have pioneered a lot here at CZW. Wrestled the first ever explosion match in CZW. They wrestled at the second ever cage of death. The this pyramid of hell. Nobody can forget about the pyramid of hell. Eric Garzo, this is the first here in CZW. Barbed wire strapped to the platform of the ring. The second time only ever in wrestling. Oh, Lobo's not afraid of you, John Zandig, or that barbed wire. And Lobo now making his way back to ringside here. What do you think he's thinking about? He's going to be scared out of his mind. Talk about fear. Talk about fear. What? The last time in 1999, it was Lobo that went through the Pyramid of Hell. Zandik covered. He pinned Lobo after going through the Pyramid of Hell. And ever since that evening, Lobo has never forgotten it. Lobo has never let Zandik forget it. Lobo has never let himself forget it. After being put through a flaming, a flaming bunch of tables, and then Zandik pinned him, and it's on! <laughs> and it's yes. on! What's Osborne doing in there? Get What's up, Osborne doing in there? You know, he's got an excuse every month. He's got to wrestle him himself. But no, but he'll get in there when the timing is right for him. They're beating the hell out of John Zandig. Look at him seizing the opportunity. Zandig so consumed with the hatred for Lobo. Even, even Leonard Tools, after 20 shots of whiskey in Atlantic City, never bet his company. What a gamble. Look at those big Day. forearms across the back of John Zandy. They're like tree trunks hitting your back, Eric. It's like a handicap match at this point. Well, John Zandig asked for it. He got it. All the wrestlers in the back have to be watching this match intently because the result can affect every single one of them. You think guys like Nick Mondo and the wife beater and Ruckus are going to have any kind of an opportunity around here if Lobo is to take over? No, nope. then they will know how it feels for guys like Quiet Stewart. What are you talking about? Justice Payne and, and myself being held back. They will know Nobody's how it holding feels. you anywhere. They will know how it feels to be held Nobody's back. Nobody's holding you anywhere. And Glenn Osborne and Lobo just all over Zandig. 
but the first big move of the match. If it is true, and Lobo has not had surgery on that broken clavicle, how will that clavicle hold up against the first moment of impact in this matchup? John Zandig better hope Lobo wins this match, ever. I'm gonna slap him with an unfair labor practice lawsuit. Lawsuit? What does Lobo know about running a company? If Lobo does win control of the company, what does he know about controlling a company, running a business? You can go bankrupt around here. He knows how to treat his employees with, express, with respect, Gargiulo. Bam! Look at that! Yeah, two on one. Two on one. John Zandig asked for it. He got it. You know, we got the commission around here. We'll have to get Osborne out of here. Have this match go down fairly. Lobo. Again, Eric. The canvas has been removed and replaced with barbed wire on that ring. Absolutely. These two men have traded countless wins and losses against each other. Zandig defeated Lobo in the first ever explosion match in the United States, which was held at CZW. They said it couldn't be done back in June of 2000. Of course, Lobo did get that win back at the Cage of Death 2 in September. Lobo beat Zandig for the season every World Heavyweight Championship that summer. And now tonight he's going to beat him for his company. A lot of history here. Lobo and Zandig. Two guys that helped start it all and it could end. The whole thing could end in one match. What if Lobo wins control of the company and decides he doesn't even want CZW around anymore? Well, then I guess we'll all be out of work, Eric. Zandig now with a reversal. A leapfrog. <laughs> And Lobo, bam! Sent Zandig right into that barbed wire. And he has no shirt on. That barbed wire attached to the skin. Ripping up the flesh of Zandig. You shut up. Yeah, good! That big bully, you big moron. Lobo now. Oh! Rob Zandig right on his back. And Lobo also falling down into that barbed wire. Lobo with an incredible threshold of pain that he has. Former World Heavyweight Champion, former Tag Team Champion, former Iron Man Champion. Lobo has held all of these belts. Lobo, one of the first four graduates of the CZW Wrestling Academy. Lobo now calling for a chair. Yeah, hit him with it, Lobo. John, what do you think is going to happen to you at Zandig wins? you think he's going to keep you around here? Zandig's not going to win this match. Eric Lobo's guaranteed me he's not going to win this match. The mind games that are involved in a match like this, the magnitude of this matchup. This matchup is huge. Zandig now getting to his feet slowly. Zandig blocks. Spins around. Oh! And he just nailed him. And Osborne punches him. But again, the it, true force of impact is when Zandig lands on that barbed wire canvas. Eric Lennon Osborne just gave John Zandig a forearm with them studded forearm pads. Absolutely. Glenn Osborne out there to support Lobo, of course, we already saw the Rachis getting involved, setting up a pyramid of hell. The pyramid of hell completely set up at this point, courtesy of the Rachis. Yeah, it's called teamwork, Eric. Oh, is that what it's called? Something you don't know about. Zandig, very slow to get to his feet. And look at him just spitting, right in the face of evil. He has no business spitting on Glenn Osborne, Gargiulo. What kind of boss is that? Do you realize everything? Zandig's a self-made businessman. He took this company from a wrestling school in February of 1999 and established it into a worldwide media conglomerate here, traveling all over the world. And it could all be lost in one match, putting it all on the line. The ultimate gamble here on Big TV. And this is what it's all about, Eric. It's about career versus company. And Lobo, that's right. But I got lose the over. Lobo's been running his company for the last several months anyway in CZW, and you know it. He's been trying. He sure as hell has been trying. You know, I saw him walking around earlier tonight, John. As confident as he is, it's all walking around making a list. A list of all the people he's going to get rid of if he takes control of this company. And your name's on there, Eric. It wouldn't surprise me. Your name is on there. It wouldn't surprise me. Both men split open. Both men bleeding. That didn't take long. I'm sure it's not the first pint of blood that's going to be spilled. I Look. can tell you exactly who's going to be gone when Lobo takes over. Eric Gargiulo, number one. VD, number two. I don't even think I'd want to work here. Ruckus, number three. All right, enough. 
Zande just slapping him. Slapping him right in the face. I don't even look at the face of Lobo. Can you imagine the amount of hatred that must be going through his body right now? Lobo has Looking blood. At Lobo. He has blood all over his face, Eric. He's busted wide open. Lobo, a man that has just tried to take the company that Zandig self-made along with the rest of the wrestlers here at CZW and take it right out from up. Oh! Big superplex, and he holds on. Big show of strength. A Falcon Arrow onto that barbed wire. A Falcon Arrow. Brian Logan counting. Of course, he has gloves on his hands. Big two count there. I think John Zandig's nose may be busted open. It may be broken. You know, there's a lot of people that sit at home. They say wrestling's fake. They land on mats. There's no mats out there. Just board wire, board wire, boards. Throw in a fake something like that. Fake you. And look at the crowd trying to rally behind John Zandig. The crowd knows what it's all about. The CZW that they have helped support, that they've been a part of. For the last few years, that's all going to change if Lobo wins. Who's to say CZW remains? Who's to say Lobo doesn't take control and sell it? Zandig with a spinning clothesline. Lobo looks like he's going to go for that DVD. Oh! And Zandig just spikes Lobo. Right on that barbed wire. Right on the back, right in the center of the ring. What's it going to take? What's it going to take to put a man down knowing his company's on the line? What's it going to take to put a man down knowing his career is on the line? All of the pain and anguish that Lobo has endured for the last few years as a wrestler. It could all be fruitless for nothing because of one match. What John, a gamble. John Zandig is a bloody mess, Eric. Zandig looking up at Osborne. Zandig just wants to knock the clock right off of Glenn Osborne. Lobo up. Up and over. Lands right on his man. Right on his bodyguard. Why does it do... Hasn't done too much to guard his body throughout this matchup. John Zande getting up very slowly, Eric. This match has taken its toll on both Lobo and John Zande. And what is his problem? What's his problem? He hates the fans, Eric. Why? What did they ever do to him? What did they ever do to him? Some fans will have to slap that taste right out of his mouth. And Zande is right behind him. Zandig is right behind him. And he goes right after him. He goes right after Osborne. John Zandig may be making a big mistake by taking Lobo outside the ring, Eric. And there is big steel barriers. Oh! Big steel chair shot to the head on Lobo by John Zandig. Look at the face of Zandig. Look at the blood just covering his face like a Halloween mask. If he wants to keep his company, that's the price he's got to pay. And Lobo right now looks like a man that never in his wildest dreams bargained for this. What did he expect? Zandig to just roll over and die? Just roll over and give him the company? Hand it over? Hand him the keys to the new car? Well, it would have been much easier, Eric. Instead of John Zandig taking a beating for it. And Zandig right now up to his feet. Hits the ropes. Zandig with a big forearm. It's about 300 pounds behind those forearms. Big clothesline and a miss. Oh! An arm suplex! An arm suplex! Just got 300 pounds off his feet. You want to question the stability of that clavicle? I think that question was just answered. I told you he gave John Zandig a false sense of security, Eric. And Lobo just spiked the head of Zandig right in the center of the ring. What a show of strength. And look at Glenn Osborne over there well on the way on John Zandig. Teamwork, Eric. That's what it's called. It's called teamwork. Zandig's got to be feeling that the back of his neck just squashed in the middle of the ring on top of barbed wire. Blood already flowing. Lobo right now up to his feet. Those of you that joined us late, Zandig invented this match. This match with a barbed wire canvas. Not only one time, but a match against Kenny Moore and Sapura overseas. Bringing it here to the United States, pulling out all the stops. And Lobo pointing to the pyramid of hell. John he wants to put John Zandig through that pyramid of hell. Lobo walking towards that pyramid of hell set up by his Rochis. 
you have to think the Rochies are in for an easy ride here at CZW if Lobo wins this match. Lobo heads towards the back. Zanik finally up, walking very slowly, limping. Glenn Osborne and Zanig face to face. I don't think John Zanig's in too much of a hurry to face off against Glenn Osborne again, Eric. Zanig's not going very far in any in a hurry right now, moving very slowly. Has to be going on pure adrenaline at this point. What do you think is going through the minds of the wrestlers in the back watching this and the staff? I'll tell you what's going through the minds. The ones that have to worry right now are worrying, Eric. Guys that helped put this company on the map, that helped take a part, proudly took a part in the success of CZW. There'll be a lot of changes made around here. You're not kidding. Oh, there, may not, there may not even be a company. Lobo, my God. My God, Lobo climbing up top. Lobo up in the air. Lobo I, mean, I don't know about you, Eric, play. but I have a job no matter who wins this match. So you think. I'm under contract for the next six years, Eric. So you think. Contracts are made to be broken, especially in Why? wrestling. Well, that was a John Zandig contract. Listen to his fans. Listen to them all. Chanting for CZW. Lobo right now just waiting up top. He knows Zandig's going to follow. Zandig don't have the heart. He don't have the courage to follow Lobo. He's got the light tubes. He's got the light tubes. The ultra violence part of what puts CZW on the map. CZW bringing violence, bringing ultra violence, hardcore back to Philly. And there's John Zandig climbing up that ladder very slowly, Gargiulo. And as quick as he climbs that ladder, he could easily fall off it and lose the company. Look at Lobo wailing away on John Zandig, big right hands. Look at their bodies, look at the bloodshed. Look at their physical state. <laughs> Zandig right now can barely stand up wobbling. He's got those light tubes. Ow! Excuse me, Eric! Excuse me! X marks the spot! These fans that are cheering for these light tubes, do they realize that what they are cheering for is a completely new company, completely different, 100% turnaround? And the Rachis now, what are the Rachis doing? They're the getting a pyramid of hell ready. The Rachis are squirting lighter fluid outside of the ring, outside on those tables. My God, the Rachis, they have lighter fluid. We got a fire burning! We got a fire burning! Zanding with the mother effing bomb! Zanding with the mother effing bomb! The company! Oh! Bomb. Oh my god! Somebody better call 911! Mother effing bomb! Mother effing bomb! As much violence has gone down in this building, this building has never held violence like ultra violence, never like this. Eric Gargiulo, this has got to be the first time Philadelphia's been taken beyond extreme. What do you think Lobo's going to do with those Rachis if he wins the match after that? Setting the table on fire. Setting up those tables. Zandy can barely stand up. Santa grazes his arms, but he hasn't won the match yet. This match is not over, Eric. How much more can these two take? How much more of a beating can they both endure? I see Lobo get thrown off of balconies, get thrown off of cages. The last time Lobo fell through a pyramid of hell, he was pinned by Zanding. Will the same thing happen tonight? That's two! That was only two, Eric! Are you kidding me, Lobo? Are you kidding me? He's got to be going on adrenaline, knowing 
dead if he was to go down to three, his career would be over. Hey, Eric, do you think if John Zandig would you could talk to him for me? Absolutely do not. You think, what? Oh, I'll talk to him. Do you think you could talk to him for me? Oh, your yeah. buddy? I'm your partner. Oh, yeah. I'm your pal. Zandig spins around, takes Lobo off his feet. When Zandig said he was going to kill Lobo, he sure as hell meant it. You can't even talk to him, Eric. I'll buy you dinner. And Brian Logan just went down. We don't have a referee. I'll pay to get you a prostitute. What? What are you insinuating? Lobo and Zandig. I'm sure if you went home to Atlantic City with all those prostitutes and drug addicts you know, you'd find one quickly. I get one for free. For yeah, you. I'm sure. Just walk outside of your house, your driveway. Zandig now up and over. Lobo's got him in position for the DVD, the Death Valley driver, but we don't have a referee. Oh! We don't have a referee. Wait a minute. a barbed wire table, Eric. Who's that? It's over. Wait. That's who it is. It's over. That's H.C. Lowe. It's over. He's not a referee. He's not a referee in this matchup. Zandy didn't lose the match. It's H.C. Lowe. Who won? Nobody. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the match, Lobo. Lobo, yes. You're fired, guard. Don't to win. Luke's not a referee. Sandy didn't lose the company. He lost, Eric. Yes, I knew it. Lobo personally guaranteed it. There's a new sheriff in town. He's not an official. He is not an official. He is not a licensed official at CZW. There's a new sheriff in town, guard Julo. We haven't seen him. And that's Sheriff Lobo. We haven't seen him since April of last year. I hope he bought a ticket because I'm he's up sure here, boss. I hope he bought a ticket because he sure as hell ain't an employee. Sandy didn't lose this company. Come on, Logan, start the match back up. What? I'm up, yes, boss. HC Logan's not an official in this matchup. I told you, guard Julio. I told you, if you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. You're wrong. You're dead wrong. All by yourself. Lobo took a, he went through the pyramid of hell and still won this match. He didn't win the match. Zandig did not lose control of this company. Or did he? H.C. Luke is not an official at CZW, I'm sorry. Or is he? Boss! That's our boss! No! He's I'm proud of our boss! What does he know about running a business? We're gonna lose our investors and go bankrupt! Boss! He didn't win the match! He didn't That's win! That's the boss, Eric! That's not the boss! That's the boss! That's not the boss! Boss! That's not the boss. No, that is the boss. But Luke is not an official in this match. He hasn't even been around here since April. What the hell is going to happen on March the 9th? You can't tell me that guy is a business owner. He's the boss, Eric. What does he know about balancing a book? Wait, here come the Rajis. Yes. It's a party! It's a party! You think Xanax just gonna walk away from his company? Why don't we just let the fans in the front row with the ref shirts come in and count the three? It's a party, Eric! Our boss knows how to throw a party! It's a party under false circumstances. They're popping champagne! Ha <laughs> ha, yes! Finally a boss we can all be proud of, but he can't be. One of the few good guys left in this business, right, Gargiulo? You want me to talk to the boss for you? But he can't be the boss. You want me to talk to the boss for you, Gargiulo? It just can't be, though. Yeah, you, you want me to talk to the boss? Here comes Trent Acid. Justice Payne, the World WA champion behind him. The Tag Team Champions, Johnny Cashmere, Trent Acid, the World Champion, Justice Payne. Look at these guys kissing up. I don't it's a party, Eric! 
There is no beating when the... But AC Luke is not in a... He hasn't even been here since April. Finally, a boss we can all be proud of. You get him out of here! What? Get him out of here! You gotta be out of your mind! What am I watching? Security, get him out of here! What are we watching? He's a troublemaker! I'm paid to be a broadcaster and express opinion, but quite honestly, I'm speechless. Nah, 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 nah. Look at Asin, he heard about free booze. And, and look at the champ! But he couldn't have lost. He lost, Eric. What the hell is going to happen on March the 9th? Are we even going to have a show? What's going to happen in this building? We're under new management, Gardulo. And you know what? I'm not going to talk to the boss for you. Hello. I just want to congratulate you on behalf of the state of Pennsylvania on the new ownership of CCW. The state of Pennsylvania, Eric. Talk about two crooks in bed with each other. Thank you, Rebel! Thank you! What the hell does Lolo know about running a business? There's a new sheriff in town, Gardulo, and that man is Sheriff Lobo!